inside for Barry. Barry now looks inside, trying to fight him off. Blaney, mid-line in turn number two. Again, a very good turn number two for Barry. He's going for the lead. Josh Barry wants that race lead. Benny, Blaney trying to pin him off. They're side by side, exit of turn four. They nearly touch at the stripe. It is Barry by inches on the inside. Dead heat in a turn number one. Josh Barry slides up ever so slightly. Side by side for third. It's Chase Tristo to the left of Joey Logano. NASCAR actually scored Blaney ahead by one thousandth of a second that last lap here at the line. I believe it's Barry this time by a thousandth of a second. And as they cut through turn number two, Blaney throws out the white flag, gives the race lead to Josh Barry, and he'll lead into turn three. Right behind of Chase Briscoe driving to the driver's door inside of Joey Logano. Chris Busher's right there. Also, Denny Hamlin, Chase Elliott. Denny Hamlin gave Chase Briscoe a wrap to the rear bumper going down the front stretch. That gives Briscoe the impetus to take over the third spot. Denny Hamlin sees the open door on the inside. He slides through. Now Chase Elliott trying to make Joey Logano pay. Logano's hung up on the outside and hung out to drive. The front two pull away. Barry and Blaney. Then it's about ten car lengths back to Briscoe, who's now being Here's Michael McGowan now working inside of Joy Logano. Logano trying to get back to the bottom of the racetrack, can't do it. McDowell gets by. Now Bubba Wallace lines him up in turn one. Joy Logano's traveling there and finds the banking in turn number two. He's off the corner, but now he'll have to pay, face the pressure from Mark Truex Jr. Out front, Josh Berry creeping away from Ryan Blaney. Those two have broken away from third place. Chase Briscoe. Briscoe again has. Denny Hamlin in his tire track. Single file now, 20 deep as the race leader heads into turn three. Already eight laps completed the Food City 500. Again, Josh Berry, Rob Albright, and Torrin Pace. They have left the third place car of Chase Briscoe. Well, yes, you might have thought that Josh Berry would have just settled in behind Ryan Blaney and let him set the pace for a while. But Berry, not finding himself up front for the first time this season, he'll go after the race lead. We've got six cars lined up. Now to the third spot, Briscoe, Hamlin, Elliott, McDowell's there, also Bubba Wallace, and moving into the back of that, Martin Truex Jr. Joey Logano, meanwhile, has slid all the way back to the back of the top ten, and he's now getting some heat from Kyle Larson. He gets more than heat. He gets a wrap in the back bumper from Kyle Larson. Logano slid up to the top of the racetrack. Looks like Larson's going to make the pass in turn one. Yeah, Kyle Larson, the ninth position, and now Christopher Bell will go to work on Logano as Joey's car still not working well. He now will move down the block. Bell. Joey Logano creating a traffic jam back there. Bell's behind uh, him. Also there, Harrison Burton, Kozlowski, and Byron. Harrison Burton having his best qualifying run of the season. Now he's getting some heat from Brad Kozlowski. He'll make the pass on the outside and outside his sights on Bell. Brad Kozlowski working the middle groove now, making it work. He draws alongside Christopher Bell. Now falls back as they head to turn one. It won't take other spotters long to alert their drivers that Brad Kozlowski, the first to venture up and make the outside grade for work as he takes a spot from Bell. Just up ahead, Michael McDowell has lost the sixth position. Bubba Wallace drives underneath him. Meanwhile, Denny Hamlin tries to go around Chase Briscoe as they battle for third. Hamlin works the outside. Briscoe down low, trying to decide who to follow is Chase Elliott. Denny Hamlin, who won here in the fall last season, now goes around Briscoe. He is third. He's 2.4 seconds behind the leader. Briscoe will try to get to the bottom. He won't quite get it done. Chase Elliott now down the back straightaway off turn two. will go to the outside of Chase Briscoe. So here is Josh Berry down to the stripe. They complete lap 15. Again, 125 laps. Make up stage number one. Brought to you by eBay Motors. Blaney is currently second. Hamlin now has cut the gap to two seconds in third. Chase Elliott now moves up to fourth as he gets around Briscoe. The rest of our current top ten. Bubba Wallace, Michael McDowell, Mark Truex Jr., Kyle Larson, and Brad Kozlowski. And Rob, right now, Josh Berry is beginning to creep away from everybody. He is. He's now built about a 10 car length advantage over Brian Blaney and another 15 back to Hamlin. But it appears, Mark, that Hamlin may have the fastest car at this point. Joey Logano, Rob, a big traffic jam. Here's Harrison Burton trying to get around him. Eric Jones is there. Byron. It looks like Christopher Bell is losing spots as they work their way through turn number two. Of course, Joey Logano exited the uh, season-long points battle last year right here at Bristol, and he's not getting much of a better start at Bristol Hill this afternoon. He's going to need a pit stop quickly. Ty Gibbs working the outside. It's going to get a twofer. He just overpowers Christopher Bell. Now blows around the William Byron machine, sets his sights on 
Joey Logano, who continues to struggle. Joey Logano is just backtracking through this field. He started fourth. Right now, he's in danger of falling out of the top 15. William Byron, who dropped back a handful of spots at the start of this race, he's now beginning to go forward. Three wide off turn two. Byron up top. He what the, the outside fuck is wall. this? Oh, inside for Christopher Bell. Now he spins Byron up against the fence, hits the safer barrier. The green flag remains out, but there is damage to the Liberty University Chevrolet of William Byron. He's well off the pace, cannot find the space in turn two to get back on the pit lane, and again is a roving landmine for these teams. Now Byron able to drop to the bottom of the racetrack. He'll certainly be coming to pit road, uh, hoping for a yellow flag he did not get. But Byron now backing off. It looks like he will come on to pit road this time as we remain under green. All that happening, Denny Hamlin took over the top spot from Josh Berry. Elliott now just flies around Ryan Blaney, and the yellow flag is out. It is four debris. It is the first time the yellow flag has fallen in the Food City 500 as we go to O'Reilly Auto Parts pit reporter, Wendy Venturini. The tow link is broken for William Byron. He reported it right away and felt it right away. He came down pit road, and the crew just did confirm when he came to a stop in that very first pit stop off a turn two, so the tow link is broken for William Byron. You can see some of the debris kind of rolling down the racetrack now in turn number four. So the yellow flag flies for the first time with Denny Hamlin, the leader of the Food City 500. The NASCAR season is here, and Toyota Racing is looking for clashers. Did you clash at the Coliseum with your favorite Toyota drivers? Clashing with the HOA, who won't let you carve bell number 20 into your lawn. Or maybe your Tyler Reddick shirt clashed with your pants while beating the Indians. If you're a clasher, then we want you. Be part of the action at toyota.com slash racing. Toyota, let's go places. NASCAR is a registered trademark of the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing. At Hunt Brothers Pizza, you can choose from 10 toppings at no extra charge. In a hurry, call ahead to place an order or grab a hunk of pizza on the go. Find the nearest location at HuntBrothersPizza.com and follow me, Joey Logano, all season long. By downloading the free PRN mobile app, you can listen to all of our live race broadcasts anywhere. You'll also have easy access to all of our award-winning studio shows. Get all the latest racing information at your fingertips with the PRN mobile app. Today's race is brought to you by GEICO Insurance. Is your insurance playbook too confusing? Make it easy. Switch to GEICO and get all your insurance coverage from one place. Go to GEICO.com. Go to GEICO.com to get started today. Green light is flashing now. Pit road is open. Will we have takers under this first caution? Will the leaders make their way to pit road? The answer is yes. Led by Danny Hamlin. Let's go down to O'Reilly Auto Parts pit reporter Wendy Venturini. Our biggest drop of the race so far had been Joey Logano dropping to 18th after starting in that fourth spot. They have a lot of work that they want to do to their race car on position at the back stretch of pit road where Josh Berry, who started second, currently second, is coming to a stop. It's going to be four tires. Pull that tear off of and so no go fuel, Brad Healy. Chris Gamehart asked him after the caution came out, what did he feel? Denny said, balance is good. Absolutely no complaints. Four tires in Sunoco for Chase Briscoe. His car started to drop off a little bit. Air pressure adjustment and wedge. Brent McMillan. Chase Elliott said that the car is good. The track conditions as they are now. They're going to do a right side tire change. Details out. Meanwhile, Mark Trix Jr. also does a right side tire change. He heads back out and almost hits Alex Bowman on the way out. Close call there. It looks like Josh Berry will lead them off the pit lane, followed by Bubba Wallace, Chase Elliott, Mark Truex Jr., Michael McDowell, Danny Hamlin from first to sixth under those set of yellow flag pit stops. From Bristol Motor Speedway, this is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Doug Rice of BRN. Make Monday night your appointment listening right here on Fast Car. I don't believe we will see the likes of a Kevin Harvick, a 60-plus race winner. I don't think we'll see that again. We're in an era now where guys will win 30, 40 races, and that'll be a huge career. These guys going out and playing in these other cars during the offseason. If I'm Rick Henry, no. We invest millions of dollars and hundreds of thousands of work hours in you. And if you're going out Thursday,
Thursday night in some sprint car deal that's going to pay $1,000. That is the absolute ultimate selfish act. That's where the prestige is. You know, there's so much tradition at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And yes, it's cool to race there in any iteration. But the tradition and the heritage is on the oval. That's Fast Talk right here on the Performance Racing Network. First caution of the day here on lap 27, altercation between William Byron and Joey Logano brings out the first yellow flag. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Speedway in this PRN broadcast of the Food City 500. Raw Ball Bright is our turn announcer today. Our O'Reilly Auto Parts pit reporters, Wendy Venturini, Brad Kozlowski, and Brett McMillan. And joining me, Mark Carroll, back in the booth, the man who did a magnificent job. Stupendous. I don't know any other adjective to use. Thank you, Doug Rice through the green flag. And that was awesome. I did not realize how absolutely on top of the cars the folks in the flag stand are and how incredibly loud it is here because for years I've watched the races behind a, a boot and you get out there now and right in amongst it, that was exhilarating. My heart's still pounding. Oh, well, great. All right, so we're getting set to go back to the green flag. Josh Berry inside row one to his outside, Tyler Reddick. Row two, it's going to be Elliott on the inside, Wallace on the outside. Row three, Truex inside, McDowell out. Then it is Blaney and Hamlin in row number four. Row five, Chase Briscoe and Ty Gibbs. Up front, down on the inside, Josh Berry flanked his outside, Tyler Reddick. As we get ready to restart here, it will be lap 30 when they come back to the strike this time. Pace car on the pit road, Geico restart zone is where they've entered. Reddick gets a little bit of jump and a big shove from Bubba Wallace as they roll into one. Tyler Reddick, who started back at 23rd, elected track position over tires. He'll lead this race side by side for second, Josh Berry and Bubba Wallace. Truex got loose in turn number two. That's going to cost him some spots. But on the outside, Bubba Wallace blows by him. And now Michael McDowell makes contact with Tyler Reddick. Reddick is spinning. Will he make contact with the inside wall? As he touches the wall, he gets hit in the driver's door by William Byron. Also involved in this wreck is going to be Daniel Hemrick. And How, the the How the fuck do you hit him? How the fuck do you hit him? How like bad of a driver do you have to... to get out of there fairly unscathed? But everybody couldn't woe down. Oh, okay, Zane Smith, how the fuck could you not see that car? He was right there in the wall at the lowest part of the track, and you were somehow able to hit him? Holy shit, that fucking clown. Jesus, holy crap. Zane Smith, you just, just go back to the truck series. If you're telling me, okay, listen, look. The car's already spinning out, okay? He's already right there on the apron. Bam. Like, like what? The, how? Stay out. His balance was good, but now he comes to a stop directly in front of us here on pit road. Does have some damage to his machine. I'm just curious how well those tires were on that restart for him and that had any play into the scenario that we're in now with uh, fresh tires on the floor of Josh Berry. He had come in and take two, taken two right side tires. So... Uh, just following Tyler Reddick's damage, we'll keep you posted. It looks like a lot of damage to the left front fender. The nose is caved in, and there currently has they have the uh, saws all on the left front fender. As you hear it going to work, the team's going to work here on Tyler Reddick's machine. Again on that replay, a bump from Josh Berry. A moment ago, I maybe said Joey Logano. That's another yellow car, but it was Michael McDowell who's running up there in the top five. And again, Reddick got control, but then as he got control, Dougie slid up to the outside. McDowell had a full run. He tried to hit the brakes in time and barely made contact with Tyler Reddick, but that was just enough to send him around. And it wasn't a full-fledged shot he got from Barry. It was just barely a tap, and then he gets a little bit of skew, and then around he goes and slides down to the inside of the front stretch. Over to Brett McMillan. Yeah, A.J. Allmendinger's been on pit road doing a bunch of body work on the right side of that car. 
They don't seem to be too concerned about the damage at this point. They you know, went ahead and changed four tires and sent him back out. To tag on to what Wendy was talking about on the right side tires, Jonathan Hassler came on the radio and told Ryan Blaney after that pit stop that his right front tire was pretty much used up after that 30-lap run. Now today, Goodyear has set up where the teams have 11 sets of tires for this race. The one set that transferred from qualifying, 10 for when the green flag drops for the rest of this race. A good year, same left side combination they've had here since 2022. A right side they put on the racetrack for the first time last fall here at Bristol. So they do have a little bit of experience with this tire combination. Didn't take the one to collect our first two caution flags, lap 23. It was William Byron, and the next time the biggest victim looks to be Tyler Reddick. Also, A.J. Allmendinger with some damage here in this crash along the front stretch as we're just now 34 laps into the Food City 500. Here's the way they stack up now under this yellow. It is Bubba Wallace, the new race leader. Josh Berry is second. Michael McDowell, third. Fourth is Chase Elliott. Denny Hamlin, fifth. Sixth to Ty Gibbs. Uh, Ryan Blaney is 7th, 8th, Martin Truex Jr., Chase Briscoe is ninth, and 10th is Brad Keselowski. Then Kyle Larson, 11th, 12th is going to be Harrison Burton, Alex Bowman, 13th, 14th, Christopher Bell, Kyle Busch is 15th, Ryan Priest, 16th, Chris Busher, 17th, John Hunter Nemechek, 18th, 19th, Joey Logano, Zane Smith being scored 20th. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., 21st, 22nd. Noah Gregson, Austin Sindrick, 23rd. Ross Chastain, he's moved up from starting last to 24th. 25th is Austin Dillon. Daniel Suarez is 26th. 27th, Justin Haley. Todd Gilliland, 28th. No, uh, or, uh, Kaz Grala, 29th. And 30th is Eric Jones. And Corey LaJoy, 31st. 32nd, Daniel Hemrick. Carson Hosevar, 33rd. Being scored minus one after an extensive stay here on pit lane. A.J. Almendinger and the Colleague Racing Machine. Minus two, Tyler Reddick now being scored 35th. Minus five is going to be William Byron, currently sitting 36th. Bring home the cup with eBay Guaranteed Fit. Brakes, headlights, and all the parts fit for your vehicle the first time, every time. eBay Motors, ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. Rob Albright, a little bit surprising. We were told in the pit area earlier today that everybody was going to stay at the bottom for a while. But boy, it has not taken very long for a middle and upper group to work in. You know, and as I look at the racetrack in turns one and two, and you guys can see it from your vantage point as well, a lot of that resin on the bottom uh, one-eighth or one-quarter of that racing surface has moved up already, especially entering turn number one and through the middle of the banking between turns one and two. So as the guys pick that up on their tires, it slowly, gradually moves its way up the racetrack, and it's facilitated by the sun. As the, the lights are off now atop the Chevrolet Camaro pace car, we're about ready to go back to green. And it's been very different. Brad Kosowski, give him credit, the old veteran, first one to move up and find a play to make the outside crew work. Just over the radio, Chase Elliott, the marbles are crazy out here. The worst I've ever seen. When we talk about marbles, that's little bits of rubber that come off the tires. They're just like little ball bearings. And, man, you get on top of them, it's time to go skating. I think crazy may be the operative word today. Top four, Bubba Wallace, Josh Berry, Michael McDowell, Chase Elliott, then Diddy Hamlin and Ty Gibbs make up the front three rows. Once again, Geico restart zone in play. It's Bubba Wallace on the outside getting a bit of a jump on Josh Berry. Berry will battle back to the low. Bubba had his choice. He picked the outside lane. He'll make the work off turn two as he pulls out in front of Josh Berry. The United States keeps the Michael McDowell. Top three single file, then door-to-door -door Chase Elliott inside. Hamlin to his outside as they work out of turn four. That's the fight for four. Coming on pit road with the race lead. Previous caution, Denny Hamlin now finds himself in a fight for four. That's where side-by-side -side to his inside goes Chase Elliott. Leading him back into turn four. Once again, it's Bubba Wallace. Serious challenge on the inside from Barry. Barry pulls along the side in his draft. It's going to be Michael McDowell. Josh Barry obviously has a very strong race car, as does the machine, the fellow driver, Michael McDowell, in a four. She goes to the inside of Bubba. Josh Barry leads the Food City 500 for the second time today. McDowell and Wallace lock still door to door as they battle for second. Michael McDowell riding the bottom lane. Bill Groove belongs to Bubba Wallace. Bubba pitches McDowell down. They still stay side by side. Top Groove not the place to be at this moment. It's Josh Barry by two car links side by side for second. got a bit.
get loose. Chase Elliott also a little bit out of control. Ryan Blaney drives underneath him. He will take over the fifth spot. Here's Ty Gibbs on the move. He just passes Chase Briscoe. Ty Gibbs first to crash yesterday. First lap of practice. He hit the wall and struggles with practice. He's making his way toward the front. Right now it's Josh Berry, two car links over Bubba Wallace. The battle is to third. Here comes Denny Hamlin, last year's winner on the concrete. Just got around Michael McDowell. Third place to Hamlin, fourth McDowell, but maybe not for long. Here comes the pole sitter, Ryan Blaney. He'll work to McDowell's outside as they dive into turn three. It takes a few laps after the fresh tire Goody has wore off, and then the outside comes in. Chase Elliott now rolls around Michael McDowell. He dropped back to six. McDowell losing spots rapidly now. I don't know if something's wrong. We'll keep an eye on that car as Ty Gibbs flashes by on the outside. Now, Michael McDowell holding up the train right now. We're about to have a battle for the lead. Here comes Bubba Wallace. He's about four feet off the rear deck lid of Josh Berry. And Bubba better get going because here comes Hamlin. He did the same thing at the initial start of this race after starting six. Quickly worked his way to the race lead. Three cars right together. Bubba skates up the racetrack. Hamlin looks inside. Side. Now, as they come across the start finish line, nose to tail, but Wallace will try the outside in turn one. Up against that left front quarter, right against the right rear of Josh Berry's machine. They'll race side by side down the back stretch. About to get racy for the lead here. Four car breakaway. Josh Berry to the inside. Bubba Wallace makes the pass on the outside. New leader is Bubba Wallace, then it's Berry and Denny Hamlin. And now Ryan Blaney makes it a quartet of cars up front as they ease away a little bit from fifth running Chase Elliott down the back stretch. Elliott now making ground on the top four. It will soon be a five-car, maybe a six-car fight for the top spot. Ty Gibbs on the move as well. Ty Gibbs is up to the sixth position now as he starts to close in on the fifth-place car of Chase Elliott, who off turn two, four to the outside and try to get a spot from Josh Berry. Josh Berry's dropped back a few spots now as Chase Elliott swings to his outside. A new battle for the lead, though. It's Danny Hamlin working all over his driver, Bubba Wallace. Well, he's going to be careful at doing that, but he can't be too careful because Blaney is right on his back bumper, knocking and running his way through. Here's Hamlin again following the tired tracks of Bubba Wallace. Meanwhile, Brad Kozlowski drives under Michael McDowell, move him up to the eighth spot. He's he back in one. As he makes his way forward, now Ty Gibbs has moved up to the fifth position. Following him by the machine of Josh Berry is Chase Briscoe. Brad Kislowski's on the move. Now looks like he is in seventh as Josh Berry got out of the groove and he's been dropping back spots. Kislowski gets around him and now Larson wants a piece. Kyle Larson will go to the bottom of the racetrack as Josh Berry continues to struggle. Following Larson as we've got a battle for the lead into turn three. Here's Hamlin looking outside of Bubba Wallace as they come down to the strike. Hamlin has the lead on the outside. Denny Hamlin was patient, but not overly patient. He'll use that middle lane to his advantage and wrestle that lead away from his driver, the guy in the car he owns, that's the machine above the wall. These laps go by fast. We've already ticked off 54 here at Bristol. It's Denny Hamlin, and right now Bubba Wallace trying not to be ticked off by Ryan Blaney. Blaney got a little bit tail happy off turn four in his effort to get by Bubba Wallace on the outside. He'll clear him down the back stretch. 55 laps complete in stage number one that ends at lap 125. Brought to you by eBay Motors so far already. Six leaders, eight lead changes. Ty Gibbs had an undrivable race car in practice yesterday. He's fought his way into the top six, but he'll give up a spot now in a turn four. That is to the machine of Brad Keselowski. Brad Keselowski's on a little bit of a run right now. He's had three wins at this track. Would love to pick up a fourth as he fights off the challenge of Ty Gibbs. And again, he'll use that middle groove to get it done. Following his tire tracks off turn two are Chase Briscoe, and now Kyle Busch gets in the mix. Ryan Blaney trying to find a way past Denny Hamlin, but the man on the move is Brad Keselowski. He looks inside of Bubba Wallace as they tangle for four. He'll show a bit of patience now, goes to the inside, gets those left side, side tires down to the yellow line, door to door with Bubba Wallace. And Keselowski's bright orange machine down on the bottom of the racetrack is right now he is doing battle with Bubba Wallace. Wallace stuck to the outside. Meanwhile, Chase Elliott enters the top three. Now Chase Elliott moved to the top side of the racetrack, and he's finding a good hookup up there as he goes door to door with Blaney for second. Elliott now diamonding the corners, driving to the wall and turns one and two, and then hanging a hard left to go to the bottom. It's working. He rides around Ryan Blaney to make his way up to the second spot. Now sets his sights on Denny Hamlin. Behind them, Keselowski gets cleared by the Wallace, and he'll now go after Ryan Blaney for third. 60 laps down here in the Food City 500. The race leader is Danny Hamlin. The rest of the top five, Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney, Brad Keselowski, and Bubba Wallace. Drivers who switch and save with Progressive could save hundreds, which could be life-changing. I mean
mean you could put that money towards concert tickets for your daughter to see that singer who sings about... Info breakups. And one song will inspire your little beauty to break up with that beast she's dating, Brian. Instead, she'll date someone who's nice and worthy of her love, not someone who addresses you and your spouse as, bro. And it's all because you could save money switching at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates not available in all states. This is NASCAR racer Michael Walton with Echo Park, the official used car of Speedway Motorsports. I'm inviting you to Echo Park's Coffee Cup Series. This NASCAR season, me and Echo Park will be arriving to the tracks early to meet fans over a cup of coffee and check out some of their cars. Plus, you can win a VIP ticket upgrade and ride in a pace car. Woohoo! Talk about a whole new meeting of free rating jitters. Echo Park, every car, happy owner. leader is Chase Selby, and we're going to stay here for a lap or two. He's getting big challenge from Ryan Blaney and Bubba Wallace. Bubba Wallace to the bottom, middle group Blaney, up to the top is Kyle Busch as he tries to make his way forward. Just putting the bump on Denny Hamlin, taking his spot with Keselowski. We currently have 16 cars in the lead pack. What was single file now is two by two. Track gets really racy. Blaney back to the top spot. Way too much fun early in the going here at Bristol. Second now belongs to Kyle Busch. The Chase Selby can lose his spot and Denny Hamlin comes charging back. Hope they can keep this up all day long. Here as we're done at lap 65. It's Blaney, Kyle Busch, Chase Selby, and Denny Hamlin, Bubba Wallace. The rest of the top ten, Larson, Keselowski, Bell, Briscoe, and Alex Bowman. Kyle Busch now challenging for the lead midway down the backstretch. Blaney fights him off, but at the inside, on the inside of turn three again, Busch drives hard to the inside, can't get it. They battle back and one. Kyle Busch will go to the bottom of the racetrack. Blaney will run in the middle group. They'll come door to door off turn two. The momentum belongs to Blaney. He's still got the lead in the three. Got to take a quick break here from Bristol. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. I think I hear race and try to do the best we can every week. Definitely a little bit bittersweet, but mentally I've been I've been prepared for it. If it's happening in NASCAR, you'll hear it on PRN's Garage Pass. Check us out at GoPRN.com. Hi, this is David Stiles from the Performance Racing Network. Each week, I join J.C. Bickinger on J.C.'s Garage. Kyle Busch, he was really competitive with the players when they switched over to Chevy this year. They've been slow. They don't really have a kind of guy out there every week. And I think he's ready to kind of move on from that point in life, owning a team right now, and focus on, on his personal life and the uh, cup side. He, he's still very competitive in the cup series. That's JC's Garage, wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Zane Smith, we haven't seen the kind of tire wear 
uh, or tire failure that the teams were worried about, and we're 71 laps into this race, so they've had a chance to really see what these cars are going to do in the long run and what their tire wear is going to be. So Tyler Reddick's got a good bit of damage out there, so does Zane Smith, so we got a couple of cars nicked up a little bit, and as you said, William Byron got in problems a little bit early on, and Mark, that's a couple of really good race cars that are basically sidelined. Reddick's minus two, William Byron's minus seven. Pit Road is open as they file single file. Let's go to Wendy Benzerini. So our leader, Kyle Busch, was loose and tight in the center on that last run. Crew Chief Randall Burnett said they are going to take advantage of every opportunity to put fresh tires on. It was four tires at lap 25, and it's four tires again also on Pit Road. We have the five of Kyle Larson who came down on lap 25, and Ross Chastain hit it directly in front of me for four tires and Sunoco Fuel. Brad Gilley. Here come the drivers to the front stretch. Denny Hamlin slides his car to the surface of his Toyota crew. Going to be a four-tire change for him. No chassis adjustment. Brad Kozlowski says he needs help on exit. He'll get an air pressure adjustment. Four tires in Sunoco. Brett McMillan. Chase Elliott has come in. He lost power at the end of that run. He said he cycled it around one time and it came back up. So right now it's nothing under the hood at this point. As he heads back out after the four tire chase, Noah Gregson was headed down Pit Road with a tire issue right as that caution came out. So he continued down Pit Road. He's in now. So Denny Hamlin will lead the charge off of pit lane. Ryan Blaney second, Chase Elliott third. Kyle Busch goes from first to fourth. And I was watching Austin Sendrick, Mark, fitting along here along the front stretch, and he came in at a really bad angle, then had to back up, and he came back out. So he lost four or five positions on that exchange. It's a pretty tight pit road, but even though, as you were describing, they were exiting, there were four wide here along this front stretch pit. They used every square inch trying to get to the line to try to improve their positions. Doug, Kyle Busch loses three spots as he goes from first to fourth. That team has been trying out a lot of different pick crew combinations here recently. Let's go back down now to Brad Gilly. Mark, during that run, a lot of drivers were starting to complain about the right front tire, saying that they were really wearing them hard. I'm walking through my section right now. I can tell you that Denny Hamlin's right front showing cords. Brad Kozlowski's right front looks okay. No cords showing. Looking at Austin Cedric's right front, or, uh, right front tire showing cords on it as well. That's the story from Pit Road. What about you, Wendy Venturini? Cords are showing for Kyle Larson and the five team. Cliff Daniels just gave the report to Kyle Larson himself. He said this run, they are actually worse than our first run. The cords are showing completely on the right front. Brett McMillan. Same thing for Ryan Blaney on the inside of the right front. It's showing cords and he was running pretty well at that point in time. Cords, not good for a tire and so that will give the team something to worry about. And Doug, again, the more laps they run, the more rubber goes down on the racetrack, the better that will get. But boy, it looks like they're going to have to really be very judicious on their tire work. Exactly, you're exactly right. Let's check in now with Brad Gilly. Well, it's interesting. Mark said the more laps they run, the more tire rubber gets down into the racetrack. I was talking with Christopher Bell before the race, and he said it was the strangest thing. In practice, we'd go out there and run lap times of 15 flat. We changed tires that we couldn't even run better than 16 seconds flat. He said the biggest problem was that this rubber is actually not grinding into the racetrack, and it's creating not just the marbles, but more of the powder from the rubber on the racetrack. You can actually see it all up and down pit road. To be honest with you, it's almost a little reminiscent of what we saw in Indianapolis Motor Speedway several years ago. And after that short 50 lap run with the cords on the tires here, gonna be a long day for some of these teams. Brad Gilly, don't remind us of that. that yeah, that was a long <laughs> day. That was a very long day. Let's take us now through the full field rundown. Mark, you want to kick us off here? All right, Denny Hamlin, our leader. Ryan Blaney is listed second. Chase Elliott, third. Kyle Busch, fourth. Brad Keselowski, fifth. Sixth, Chase Briscoe. Christopher Bell, seventh. Eighth, Alex Bowman, ninth. Is Kyle Larson, tenth. Is Chris Buescher. Bubba Wallace is eleventh. John Hunter Niemicek, twelfth. Ty Gibbs, thirteenth. Fourteenth, Ricky Stenhouse, Jr. Josh Berry, who led early on, is fifteenth. Sixteenth. Carson Hosovar, Joey Logano, 17th. Justin Haley is 18th, 19th. Eric Jones, Todd Gilliland rides 20th. Austin Sendrick, 21st. Corey LaJoy, 22nd. Then 23rd, Martin Truex Jr. Ryan Priest is 24th. 25th, Michael McDowell, Ross Chastain, 26th. Austin Dillon, 27th. With Daniel Hemrick, 28th. 29th, Daniel Suarez. 
30th, Kaz Rolla. 31st, the last car on the lead lap, A.J. Allmendinger, minus one lap, Noah Gregson in 32nd, Harrison Burton is 33rd, Tyler Reddick, minus two, is 34th, 35th, is Zane Smith, he's minus three, minus six is William Byron. That full fill rundown brought to you by Race Day, NFT.com. Are you a true racing fan? Do you like adding those little die-cast cars and race weekend hats to your collection? Then race on over to racedaynft.com. Sign up for free. Get the best collectibles delivered right to your door. Lights are off the pace car. It will soon, with Jesse Dollavoot at the controls, go on to pit lane with Ryan Blaney inside, Danny Hamlin on the outside, now leading them into the Geico restart zone. Next car starter, Shannon Bednarik now throws the green flag and... Hamlin gets out of there in a hurry. Huge jump for Danny Hamlin right down in front of Ryan Blaney. Car length and a half lead. The third is Chase Elliott. He'll immediately go to work on Blaney with Kyle Busch in tow. Danny Hamlin got a nice jump there. He's out from all by himself. Now Blaney drops down to the bottom. He'll try to challenge. Then it's Chase Elliott and Kyle Busch. Front four single file side by side from the pit position. Chase Briscoe will work the bottom of the racetrack to his outside. His Brad is out behind him. It's also Alex Bowman, Christopher Bell, then Chris Busher, Kyle Larson. Also side by side, you have John Hunter Nemechek and Bubba Wallace. About the top 12 separate themselves slightly from the rest of the pack. Finally, Josh Barry breaks in. He'll try to chase down uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. along with Ty Gibbs. Oh, the big dogs are on the front porch here at Bristol right now. It's Denny Hamlin, Ryan Blaney, Chase Elliott, Kyle Busch, your top four. Best battles for that fifth position behind Ch uh, Kyle Busch. That's where Brad Kinsowski is sitting outside of Busco, uh, and there's a bunch of lead. Here's Blaney inside of Denny Hamlin as they move across the stripe. For the fourth time today, Blaney's on the point. Blaney will go to the bottom. Denny Hamlin slides up the banking in turn number two. Exits that corner. But Chase Elliott just a car length behind. And half a car length back of him is Kyle Busch. Single foul for the top seven here at Bristol, led by Blaney. And then it's Hamlin and Chase Elliott. And going to be next in line will be Kyle Busch. Trying to work that outside into turn number one is Kyle Larson. He's about in the eighth position right now. Into the back bumper and put a bump of two his teammate. Larson went around Bubba Wallace for ninth. Now he's trying to take over eighth from Alex Bowman at the strike. Nearly a dead heat. Bowman will go to the bottom of the racetrack. Kyle Larson, who is outside, will try to get the advantage off turn number two. He's got a half car length advantage. Now he'll take that spot from Bowman. Larson will take that spot. Blaney out front by about two car lengths. That's a lot here at Bristol. The battle is the third. It's Kyle Busch trying to work his way under Chase Elliott. Busch gets those left side tires right down to the yellow line that separate the track from the apron. Holy fucking shit. Sitting right behind them looking for some running room. Brad Keselowski out of turn four on the inside. A wiggle from Bush, but he takes over third. With all those courts showing, no doubt some of these drivers are going to be babying their tires just a bit, but not so for Ryan Blaney and Denny Hamlin as they continue to set the pace. Now they're out front now by about three car lengths settling into third. That's going to be oh, Kyle damn. Bush what and it's Chase Elliott and Brad Keselowski. Mark, I'm what the fuck? Up front right now are some of the biggest players in the sport making up the top five. Battle for the lead coming out Holy of Holy shit, three. shut Eddie up. Shut up. Around. What Ryan the fuck Blaney is going on? Hamlet back in the lead. He too now has led this race for a fourth time. Holy Hamlet fuck. What the fuck? Slides up the banking unintentionally on turn two. And it enables Kyle Bush to get to the back. Oh, shut up. Turn three. Nobody's been able to get to the front and just lock it down and keep the field. Holy in fuck. Bay. Let's see what Hamlin's able to do. A single car link back to Blaney. Equal distance back to third place, Kyle Busch. Behind him, a good fight for the fifth position. That's where Brad Keselowski is trying to hold off Chase Prisco and Christopher Bell. They're single file for the moment. One of the things I'm noticing, Doug, they have backed the race pace down to over 16 and a half seconds, a lot slower than we normally see. So the man out front, everybody's kind of backing up there with them, trying to save their time. And they're not doing that to save fuel. They're in a saving mode, but it's saving Holy time. shit, bro, I turned it off. What the fuck? Holy fuck, what is going on? Why is my Discord going fucking like nuts? Holy fuck, shut up! What the fuck? Bro, what the fuck is going on, bro? What the fuck? God damn. 
second place car here, and that's going to be Kyle Busch. Rob, he got around Ryan Blaney, and now he's trying to track down the leader, Hamlin. He did, and Hamlin's got about a three car length advantage as they charge off turn number two. Behind uh, Busch is uh, Blaney by about two car lengths. So we have Hamlin out front, two car lengths back to Kyle Busch, two more back to Ryan Blaney, four to Chase Elliott, then a good tangle for the fifth spot. Kislowski has it, Briscoe and Bell would like to take it away. Phoenix winner, Christopher Bell trying to make it a double as he goes to the low side and Chase Briscoe, he'll move Briscoe up the banking, but Briscoe still is clear of Bell. Yeah, Bell having a hard time trying to get around Briscoe. Now Briscoe trying to work on Brad Kislowski. Kislowski kind of holding up the brake for a moment as Ty Gibbs gets in on this fix, as does Kyle Larson. So as they work their way out of turn number four, we again see Briscoe and Bell making some contact, also trying to join that battle, Ty Gibbs and Kyle Larson. Look a bit hairy there for a moment in turn number four, Chase Briscoe got into the back end of Christopher Bell. Everybody gets through safely, but now Larson goes to the outside of Gibbs. I think we're seeing the biggest lead of the day. That's Denny Hamlin by about eight car lengths. Let's go back to that battle with Ty Gibbs, Briscoe, and Larson. Those three are knotted together into one. That's for the seventh position on the racetrack. Gibbs working the low line. Middle group belongs to Briscoe. Right in Briscoe's tire track. Kyle Larson. Right behind them, Alex Bowman gave Bubba Wallace a shot at the exit of turn number two. They're fighting for the 11th spot. Here's Bowman trying to drive to his inside in turn one. Alex will go to the bottom and easily bypass Bubba Wallace off turn number two. And now moving to the inside of Bubba is Chris Buescher, who started deep in the field. 100 laps in the books, 125 make up stage number one. Denny Hamlin is your race leader. NASCAR champions on the track for over 20 years to innovating 94 octane, the highest octane on the market. Performance is what Sunoco does. All Sunoco fuel at the pump meets the same top tier standards as the fuel used in NASCAR. From the track to your tank, you can trust Sunoco to help your vehicle perform at its peak. Get in zone, auto zone. Welcome to auto zone. What are you working on today? Brakes? We can save you 15% on that. We have OE quality Duralast brake pads and rotors in stock, ready for pickup or delivery. We also have calipers, brake fluid, tools, and anything else you'll need to do the job right. When you get Duralast pads and rotors... To All right, guys. I think I, I, think I killed uh, Discord. So, yeah, it shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't go bleeping anymore like it was. So, yeah. This is brought to you by Geico Insurance. Is your insurance playbook too confusing? Make it easy. Switch to Geico and get all your insurance coverage from one place. Go to geico.com today to get started. Denny Hamlin, your leader, with now 21 laps to go in stage number one of the Food City 500. Kyle Busch is a half second back. You're listening to PRN, the Performance Racing Network. on the inside, Byron in the middle, Chastain up high, Hamlin now beginning to come to the front, he's got the edge now, he'll take the lead away, Brian Blaney sliding down into the crash, there was a lot of bumping and right, and Blaney noses into the infield retaining wall, Ross Chastain doing a great job, Truex right there, big in his mirror as they race down the back stretch here, Harrison Burton is spinning down the back straightaway, everybody going to the top side, here comes Kyle Larson, Larson downs to the bottom of the racetrack, he wants to lead all four, Chris Buescher has to and a spin off of turn four. Now we got a ton of cars that are in this one, and Larson is certainly one of those cars. Trouble coming out of turn four. Hamlin is sideways. The car spins down on the apron of the racetrack. Byron takes that brightly painted number 24 to the front. He gets a big shot from Daniel Suarez. This is PRN. <laughs> Speedway with 15 laps to go in stage number one. Battle for the lead in turn number one. Kyle Busch has caught the back bumper of Denny Hamlin on turn two with a whole host of cars trying to stay on the lead lap directly ahead. My 
right in front of them now. It's Austin Dillon and Harrison Burton. They're about to be lapped. Hamlin pulled away a little bit. He's got about a six-car length advantage over second place Kyle Busch. Looks like Busch rolled out of the throttle momentarily as he's fallen from two car lengths back to about ten car lengths back. And soon, Brian Blaney will be on his back bumper. So now Danny Hamlin goes around Austin Dillon. Dillon running 31st. 30 cars on the lead lap with 13 laps to go in stage one. The race leader Danny Hamlin using the middle lane in one and two. And as Kyle Busch really struggling now as Blaney goes to his outside, he wants second. I'll tell you who's struggling is Austin Dillon. He nearly lost that car and got up into the fence. And now Christopher Bell dives under him. Mark, I'm speculating Dillon may have a tire going down. He is way off the pace. And I'm going to speculate that Kyle Busch is trying to protect his tires right now too because he nearly stopped in the corners and now Christopher Bell's rolling by him like he's dropped an anchor out the back of that number eight car. Kyle Busch struggling after battling for the lead. And Christopher Bell now is rolling very, very well. Maybe he saved some of the tire goodie for this part of the run with just about a dozen laps left in this stage. Watching race leader Denny Hamlin, he's caught William Byron. He's not worried about Byron. Byron's already six laps down. If he gets around him, though, Rob, it's a roadblock in front of the yeah, right, cars. Yeah, right in front of them are four cars. Bubba Wallace, who's top five earlier, along with Harrison Burton, A.J. Allmendinger, and Tyler Reddick, right in front of the race leader. Austin Dillon way off the pace. Cars are scattering inside, outside of him. He's created a bit of a chicane on the racetrack. He's struggling with his tires. Right now, nine to go in stage one. And it's still Denny Hamlin setting the pace off turn number two, giving William Byron in front of him a bit of room as the leader hits into three. Yeah, then. I think that uh, Hamlin's just playing it safe here, Mark. He, he's not in any big hurry to get around William Byron. That's not creating a problem for him. Kyle Busch has just been passed by Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Also moving by him, Justin Haley. He has gone from second to 14th. He's dropping like a stone. Three more cars right behind our three wide. Joey Logano It is also Josh Perry. Ryan Priest gets into the left side of Kyle Busch's car. Near disaster. Let's go over to Wendy. The report between Kyle Busch, the crew chief ran over that, the spotter, is that right side tire and how much is giving out on Kyle Busch right now. They were trying to decide, is it the resin causing the issue with the right side or is it concrete? That answer is unknown, but I do know every driver is complaining about that right side tire right now on the racetrack. Kyle Busch right now is just trying to nurse that number eight FICO Chevrolet around for the last few laps here of stage one. He's going to have five more in his car visibly not under control right now. It's going to be a rough ride out there for Kyle Busch as we watch Denny Hamlin kind of just pick his way through this lap traffic right now. He's not going to go up there, Mark, and battle all these lap cars in front of him. So here they are as they work their way to the stripe. Hamlin now has thrown out the parachute. Ty Gibbs is actually the leader right now with now just four laps to go in stage number one. Hamlin has slipped back about eight or nine positions. He's about to lose another one to Josh Berry, and he is literally crawling around the racetrack. Looks like almost every car out here now is trying to pace themselves just to get to the stage one break. Ty Gibbs is the leader, then it's Larson, Keslowski, Blaney, and Chris Busher, and it changes literally every lap. Three laps to go here in the state. Gibbs, Larson, Keslowski, Blaney are at the front four, and then it is the rest of the racetrack covered with race cars just trying to survive two more laps. Denny Hamlin slides up. He gets into the fence a little bit off of turn three. We will see if he is able to sustain that. And, and Kyle Robert Bush spins in turn number two, so the guys that were battling for the lead just a handful of laps ago both in serious trouble. Kyle was now backing down the back straightaway. The car pointed in the wrong direction as he tries to keep pace and not lose. I think he might have lost one lap already, and he's trying not to lose another one. Indeed, both Bubba Wallace, Kyle Busch, Austin Sindrick, the tires gave up. They lost a lap. Now Busch has swung the car around at the the entrance of the uh, turn three apron and now heading back in the right direction heading over to his rcr crew on pit road tire down on that fico chevrolet what a bizarre chapter those last five laps were marked with drivers just surrendering trying to nurse their tires to get to the end of stage one which we will be there shortly here and let's go over to wendy and Torino. we thought yesterday in practice was strange what we just saw leading up to this caution was even a little bit more strange kyle bush was just hanging on to the right side tires but then we heard every driver say the same thing that they were just barely hanging on to their tires that Denny hamlin goes for a spin kyle bush goes for a spin two fresh tires on the right side for kyle bush let's over to head over
over to Brad Gilly. Yeah, once the tires gave up, the, t the car just had to give up. Denny Hamlin was leading this race, and all of a sudden he felt things start to give up. He started dropping to the back until his right rear tire went down. He actually said the right rear was down right before that caution came out. His crew jumped up on the wall. He's going to try and stay on the track until pit road opens so they don't have a penalty for McMillan. No, Bubba Wallace, same thing. About the last 15 laps of that stage, he was screaming that he needed to come down pit road. He felt like the right rear tire was about to go. Once that caution came out, he got a laugh and said, I can't believe it. It was everything I could do to keep putting this thing on the back of the hauler. NASCAR will be coming up to clean the track here in a little bit. Stage one is in the books. Top ten where Ty Gibbs, Kyle Larson, Chris Buescher, Brad Keselowski, John Hunter, Nemechek. Six to ten, Martin Truex Jr., Ryan Blaney, Ryan Priest, Josh Berry, and Christopher Bell. And our stage one break is brought to you by eBay Motors. Earn rubber, not cash, by shopping at eBay Motors, ebaymotors.com. Will they find a home? Sponsored by Geico. Sarah wants a yard. My own little paradise. Brad, however, hates yard work. The only thing I hate more than cutting the grass is paying someone to cut the grass. Compromise is tough, but these two won't have to compromise when they bundle home and car insurance with Geico. It's easy, and they can save even more. In the end, Sarah and Brad found a great home with a yard. A very, very small yard. Time to get it done. And I'm done. Bundling without compromise at Geico.com. Hey folks, it's Doug Rice. Did you know you can take PRN with you anywhere? By downloading the PRN mobile app, you can listen to our live race just about any place on the planet. And you will not miss a second of the action. Plus, you can hear our shows like the fantastic editions of Fast Talk. Plus, Craig McMillan on the bigger course and Mark Garrow with Garage Fast. Get all the latest racing information right at your fingertips. The PRN mobile app, available at the App Lab Store and on Google Play. Under our fourth yellow of the day, stage one caution. Echo Park, the official used car of Speedway Motorsports, invites you to Echo Park Coffee Cup Series this season. Join NASCAR legends and Echo Park at Speedway Motorsports tracks to enjoy a cup of coffee and check out some awesome cars. You could win a VIP ticket upgrade and ride in the pace car. Echo Park, every car, happy owners. We're still riding around. Pit Road is closed. This is PR in the Performance Racing Network. Hi, this is Doug Rice, host of PRN's Behind the Mic, a podcast where we talk to the top sportscasters from all over this country. People like Tim Roy, the voice of the Golden State Warriors. It made it so much more interesting and so much more challenging in the sense where you knew that this team was, you know, moving in a historical direction. Marty Brenneman, the longtime broadcaster for the Cincinnati Reds. Our engineer, Dave Arbrewster, who was with me for 46 years, said, uh, I've just gotten a call from the clubhouse. Lou wants you to put an open appeal out on the air and ask Tom Browning to come back to the ballpark. Ben Ingram, the play-by-play -play voice of the Atlanta Braves. Winning the World Series, that was so much fun. It was the most fun I've ever had in my entire life. Who wouldn't want to repeat that? Broadcasting is easier. What we do is easier when the team is recovering, is performing well. Remember to check out PRN's Behind the Mic and hear from the great voices of sports wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. I'm Richard Petty. As we honor Doug Rice this season, here's another great moment from more than 35 years on PRN. Kyle Larson down the backstretch, trying desperately to hold off Kevin Harvick. He exits turn four. Now the checkered flag for Kyle Larson as he picks up his first victory at Bristol Motor Speedway. Hey, Doug, I know you'll still come around and check on us from time to time, so have a happy retirement. I'm sure you'll come around and check on us. I mean, Richard does. Richard's always at the race. Hey, he's he's never retired. Fun. He only retired from driving. That man's still extremely busy. I'd love to have the energy he has now at my age. And it looks like pit road is about to open up, and that means it's going to get very busy as the train is led by Ty Gibbs. Let's go over to Wendy Venturini. Well, I was just listening to Richard Childress on the radio saying he talked to NASCAR this morning about those right side tires. Randall Burnett and him having a conversation with Kyle Busch on the radio just now. This is a problem that we're having on pit road. Everybody's going to be taking tires. Everybody's going to be worried about those right sides. On the back stretch of pit road, we have uh, the five of Kyle Larson coming down. Also, Ty Gibbs, Joey Logano is down here. Let's head over to Brad Gilly. Brad Keselowski able to maintain 
balance. He comes here on the front straightaway, slides an inbox. Uh, inbox is going to be a four-tire change. Denny Hamlin able to stay out there. Right rear down on that car. They're going to get a four-tire change. They're going to go fuel. Brent McMillan. Uh, Chase Elliott's voltage has been fluctuating, but it's been holding steady lately. So right now, they're not going to do anything about it. Just give them a four-tire change. Going to keep them out there until they have fit problems. He had the four tires stuck, everything goes smooth, and he heads back out. Larson, the first off the pit lane, followed by Tom Gibbs. Then it's going to be Brad Kozlowski, Ryan Blaney, John Hunter Nemechek, Chris Buescher, uh, then Martin Truex Jr., and his teammate, Christopher Bell. Let's go down now to Brad Gilly. Mark, look at Denny Hamlin's right side tire is just destroyed. It was the right rear that went down. Hamlin said his car was loose, and that was the tire he was sliding. You can see right where it wore down to the cords. The problem also, the right front is worn down to the cords. That one was just able to hold air. Skate drivers and teams on my side of pit road, Austin Sindrick, they were saying they don't expect this track to get any different or any better. That this is what we're going to fight all day because right now everyone's stuck in the resin. That's where it's laying rubber. It's not taking on rubber above that resin. So we might have pit stops about every 50 laps or less, guys. And let's do the math on that as we have only 132 laps in the books. And how many tires do they have laying on the pit road. Let's check in with Wendy Venturini and our weather guard top the box. I'm with Randall Burnett, crew chief for Kyle Busch, one of the cars that just had the issues. We're seeing this up and down pit road. How are you keeping your driver at bay right now? Well, we're just trying to give him all the information. Uh, we saw a lot of wear yesterday. Uh, this was certainly a concern yesterday uh, during practice after, you know, we saw a lot of cars with cords and everything else. So, um, part of the problem is the track's just not taking rubber like it normally does, right? So, uh, usually that cleans up as the race goes on, as rubber goes down. But for whatever reason, the track doesn't seem to be taking a lot of rubber, and the tires are just wearing out because it's just, you know, whatever's going on, obviously. So uh, it's a little frustrating. Had a really good car, obviously. We're not out of it yet. We just got to get our lap back and uh, hopefully take this Fico.com back to the front. Uh, Fico.com Chevy back to the front and make a good day out of it. How do you manage this? Well, it's just, it's going to be about tire management all day long, about how hard can you push, and you can't push too hard to be the first guy to have a problem. It's going to be like the name of the game, which is unfortunate, you know, that's not like how we all want to race, obviously, but uh, it's, it's what we got today. We're just going to have to figure it out. Thank you for your time. That's Randall Burnett, crew chief for Kyle Busch. An unfortunate circumstance. I'm looking at a lot of right side tires blown completely out up and down pit road here. And you heard those two words that Randall Burnett said, tire management. Race fans know there's no letting up, even when you're leading the field, and the front runner in the truck boxes knows this too. So when it comes to durability, security, and innovation, the folks at WeatherGuard aren't taking their foot off the gas anytime soon. Learn more at WeatherGuard.com. Let's learn some more right now from Brett McMillan. Well, Alan Gustafson was uh, telling Chase Elliott earlier, after Chase asked him, he said, we have seven more sets of tires, including scuffs. Now, Jonathan Hassler, crew chief for Ryan Blaney, just came on the radio and told him he's hearing that they may be able to get some more tires. So we'll wait and see how that plays out. I was looking at Ryan Blaney's tires that just came off his car. They are the worst-looking set I've seen come off his car. So things are getting worse rather than better. The coring is really, really bad. There was actually a part of where it looked like the tread had actually peeled back some. And Alex Bowman's tires on the right side really bad. Some of the core, and actually some of the cording is actually showing up and sticking out. That's how bad things have been on the right side tires. Doug, it reminds me of race, a race years and years ago at Charlotte Motor Speedway, Coke 600, won by Darrell Walsh. They were having tire wear issues there, and he said, I'm running a certain time. I don't care whether that's first place, fifth place, or tenth place. And Darrell did that all day long and wound up winning the race while other drivers pushed too hard and had tire issues. 1988 is when that took place. Good memory there, Mark Arrow. Here's the way they ride right now, brought to you by Hunt Brothers Pizza that Mark and I enjoyed delicious slices of or hunks of earlier today. Kyle Larson is the race leader. Ty Gibbs is second. Brad Keselowski, third. Fourth to Ryan Blaney. Fifth is John Hunter Nemechek. Chris Buescher is sixth. Seventh to Josh Berry. Martin Truex Jr. is eighth. Ninth is Christopher Bell. And tenth will be Ryan Priest. Eleventh is Joey Logano. Jenny Hamlin, twelfth. Thirteenth, Chase Elliott. Ricky Stenhouse, Jr., fourteenth. Fifteenth is Daniel Suarez. Sixteenth, Alex Bowman. Eric Jones, seventeenth. Kaz Rolla, eighteenth. Ninth.
19th, Justin Haley. And after starting last, Ross Chastain from 36th up to 20th. First car one lap down is Austin Sindrick. Kyle Busch also caught a lap down last time. They're not worried about getting it back right now. 364 laps to go here in the Food City 500. The leaderboard brought to you by Hunt Brothers Pizza, where we love racing and we love pizza. Find your next pizza at HuntBrothersPizza.com or download the Hunt Brothers Pizza app. The lights are still on the pace car. Uh, our sales executive, Barry Roach, dropped off a couple of, they call them, hunks of pizza earlier today. Quite yummy. Now, that was nice for pre-race, but should he have not saved, like, some mid-race, post-race Hunt Brothers Look, The way this race is going, Rob Albright, we may need extra pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sending some up to the roof over on the back street? Well, I didn't think so. Yeah. That's okay. I don't need it anyway. But it would be good. There's no doubt about that. Well, they're lining up behind the pace car. The lights are still on. They'd actually put those lights off on that electric blue and white Chevrolet Camaro pace car, but they're back on yet again. So we'll stay under caution at least for another lap or two. Well, let's go ahead and give you 21 through the rest of the field. Corey LaJoy still on the lead lap is 21st. 22nd is Ross Chastain, 23rd, Carson Hosevar. Michael McDowell is 24th, 25th, A.J. Allmendinger. Chase Briscoe is 26th, Daniel Hembrick, 27th, 28th, Bubba Wallace. 29th is Harrison Burton. Bubba Wallace is the last car on the lead lap. Uh, Burton is one lap down at 29th. 30th is Austin Cedric, also a lap down. Minus one, Austin Dillon, 31st. Minus one in 32nd is going to be Kyle Busch, also a lap down now. Noah Gregson in 33rd. Minus three in 34th, Tyler Reddick. Minus five in 35th is Zane Smith. Minus seven in that Liberty University Chevrolet in 36th, William Byron. Over to Wendy Venturini. The big question right now is NASCAR going to give more tires to the team. This isn't girl math, this is NASCAR math. The tires are lasting 33 to 35 laps before they're courting. With the sets left on Pitt Road, especially in the eighth here, they only have six sets left. Randall Burnett says we don't have enough tires. It needs about 50 laps per set, and with the laps remaining, that doesn't matter. So can NASCAR go ahead and give some more tires from Goodyear? That's the question we're going to follow throughout this race when we get back racing green. Need to mention that NASCAR had an Elgin sweeper on the racetrack. They have really cleaned up all the dust and marbles that were up in, on, near the wall turns one and two, three and four. And Doug, what was interesting, that rubber looked like sand. It was like kind of a black sand kind of whipped up there against the wall. That's pretty scary. And we've heard people say that means it's not going in. You can see it out here, Mark. There is no big zone right now. There is no below or above the yellow line place out here where we're seeing the rubber collect on the racetrack. It's grinding up and blowing away. NASCAR has said, Greg Stucker said they have enough tires here at Bristol to issue one more set of four to each one of the teams. That's a little bit of the cavalry coming across the hill. They would probably like at least two more, maybe three more, but they don't have the tires. We're getting set to go back to green. All right, we're ready to go to Green Pace Car on Pit Road. Up front, it's Brad Keselowski to his outside, getting the big jump is Kyle Larson, and right in his tire tracks is going to be Ty Gibbs. Now battling back off turn two, Keselowski goes to the inside of Ty Gibbs. Ty says, okay, I'll go after the race leads. He works alongside Larson. As they work their way out of turn four, Gibbs on the point, then Larson. Larson now sees John Hunter Nemechek drive up to his passenger door. John Hunter Nemechek had been making his way toward the front. This is not a fluke. He's got a good race car. He'll take a second away from Larson and go after the leader, Gibbs. A couple of youngsters on the point. Ty Gibbs, the race leader. John Hunter rides second. Third is Larson. Here comes Josh Berry rolling up to the outside of Larson in third. From the front to the back, back to the front again. Josh Berry trying to make his way forward. Gets a little bit high off turn number four, but he'll as they work their way now through turn number four, it is going to be Ty Gibbs on the bottom. John Hunter Nemechek trying to fight off to his outside, Josh Berry. It sure doesn't look like on this restart they're trying to save tires and go gentle on them. Josh Berry to the outside of John Hunter Nemechek as they fight for second. Josh Berry takes that Sunny D machine up to the outside of John Hunter Nemechek. It's still Ty Gibbs on the point, but here comes Berry down in the inside and one. From the top all the way to the bottom, big move by Josh Berry. He wants to lead this race, but Ty Gibbs says, uh-uh, not right now. Now Martin Truex Jr. on the prowl on the outside. He is trying to now go around Barry for the second spot. Looks like he'll easily do it. Truex now sets his sights on teammate Ty Gibbs. Martin Truex Jr. so in big strength at this juncture in the race, still just back past the quarter mark. He'll go to work on Ty Gibbs for the top position. Martin Truex Jr. wants to lead in the track where he's never won. Goes to the outside of Gibbs. He'll be the leader that lap. As
as he makes the pass on the Toyota of Gibbs. And yes, what Doug Rice said is a bit surprising. Truex has never won at Bristol. Could this be his day? The fight is for third. Kyle Larson working on Josh Perry. First time today, Martin Truex Jr. has been out front, but Doug now, the opening five races, he's led four. Truex showing some early season speed. Now the outside lane begins to work as Kyle Larson will try to wrestle second away from Ty Gibbs. Behind him, Christopher Bell goes after Josh Perry. Mark, I think you said it a moment ago with this entire situation. Pay me now, I'm going to go up try to lead some laps. Pay me later when I use up all the goody on my tires. Let's go to Brent McMillan. Guys, Goodyear is down here in their little building, currently mounting tires. But NASCAR has not released the tires yet, so that's a wait and see at this point. Goodyear is mounting them as a just-in-case. So now it looks like Gibbs trying to go back around uh, Martin Truex Jr. Doug, they have now dropped the lap times to 17 seconds. Usually it's about 15-3, 15-4, so they have dropped the speech, trying to hang on to those tires. Gibbs will lead the field again back to one. Almost looks like they're going to take turns setting the pace. Now Kyle Larson will move to the outside of Martin Truex Jr. to take over second. Bell is on the back of our teammate Truman. I don't wonder if there's not a little choreography here going on right now. It's Ty Gibbs, the race leader, Kyle Larson in second. A battle here for third. Truex, he's got Bell to his outside. Three, Joe Gibbs, Toyota's running third, fourth, and fifth. Truex and Bell battling for fourth, fifth is Hamlin. Now here's Truex as he has a little bit of a bobble inside turn three. Bell will get around him. Hamlin now going around Truex. Move him up to four. Joey Logano, who started near the front, dropped back rapidly at the outset of this race. He's worked his way back to the top ten. He's now door to door with Josh Berry for the sixth position. Back on the point, it's Ty Gibbs out of turn four, back to start finish line. Larson, Bell, Hamlin, and Truex. Front five are all single file. They are, and just as you say that, Doug looking to the outside, looking for the race lead. Kyle Larson moves door to door with Ty Gibbs and takes away the race lead. Larson is going to become the 12th different leader of the Food City 500. We're just in the second stage of this race. Larson leads the pack back to one. And Eddie Hamlin now beginning to get a bit more racing to the outside of the racetrack. He'll work on teammate Christopher Bell. He'll take that spot away and go after Gibbs. Mark, I feel like we've hit a point in the race that if you want to lead, they may let you go up there and grab a few laps because in doing so, you're going to use up your tires. You can see no way around that. Doug, it seems to me like they're trying to set a speed that doesn't injure the tires. Again, they have backed it down to 17.2. Again, doing whatever they can to save the right side. Larson's out front. Hamlin now trying to get by him and lead this race for the fifth time already. It's funny, the Greek chorus that we heard after the Daytona 500, everybody slowed down to save gas. They're slowing down at risk of gas, not the concern. So here again is a battle for the lead. Ty Gibson, well, if you're going to slow down that much, I'll go back to the front. Ty Gibson now has been the leader four times today. And you know, I have to say, as a, as a spectator, I really don't see the difference in the speed. You can't really tell they're running 17 seconds. It just looks like great racing to me. I'm watching right now on the scoreboard, though. Kyle Busch nowhere near getting back on the lead lap. He is 31st. He's only minus one. But he's running behind other lap cars of Harrison Burton and Austin Sindrick right now, Mark. And again, Doug, he's got to find a way to nurse his way through the field. He can't just charge up there, or again, he'll have the tire issues. And again, remember, Bush at one point was fighting for the lead. Here is the battle for the lead again. Teammates, it is going to be Gibbs inside. Hamlin on the top. And Hamlin will wrestle away that top position. Kyle Larson now rolls to the outside. He'll go to work on Gibbs for second. Larson's battling for second. C. Bell is right there. Christopher Bell is kind of lurking in this battle as he goes to the outside of Ty Gibbs for third. The front three to the bottom of the racetrack. Jimmy Hamlin on the inside lane opens up off turn two for Kyle Larson. But he settles up behind him. Again, a little bit of a traffic jam up front. Everybody trying to back it down just a bit. Hamlin wiggles on the outside, turn four. Hamlet Larson trying to retake the top spot. Larson now works inside of Denny Hamlin. They're midway down the back straightaway, diving into turn number three. Larson down on the bottom of the racetrack. It's car uh Christopher Bell right in Larson's tire tracks. But here comes Hamlin working to the outside. Hamlin is your leader. He continues that way. By the way, he's led five times for 56 laps in counting as we go to Wendy Venturini. We saw Ty Gibbs just give up the lead. They told him over the radio to watch his pace. They said, use Kyle Larson as your pacer. Let him set the pace for the field. So Ty Gibbs is now tucked right behind Kyle Larson. They said this is going to be the longest green flag run. We will run it until somebody blows a right side tire. Right now, Rob Albright still side by side.
During that 10 seconds, Ty Gibbs come up and took the lead. The top five looked like this. It's Ty Gibbs, Kyle Larson, Martin Truex Jr., Denny Hamlin, and Josh Berry. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Need a little help? O'Reilly Auto Parts can help. Need advice? We've got advice. No matter what you need, we have thousands of professional parts people doing their part to make sure you have it. Exceptional customer service. Just one part that makes O'Reilly stand apart. The professional parts people. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto parts. When it comes to maintaining your engine to run at peak performance, trust Z-Max Micro Lubricant. Z-Max soaks into metal and it's so easy to add to your oil or gas to disperse carbon buildup in your engine, fuel system, and transmission. Protect your vehicle's engine to the max with Z-Max. Check us out at Z-Max.com or visit us on Facebook and Twitter to find out more about our full line of products. Z-Max for your car, big rigs, small engines, firearms, and more. That's Z-Max Micro Lubricant, available at your favorite auto parts store. Problems in turn three here. Chase Elliott slid up the racetrack, and he got into a couple of other cars. It looks like Zane Smith was also involved in that. And that'll bring out our fifth yellow flag of the day. Nobody got turned around, but Mark, we started seeing almost exactly at the same time. Four or five cars breaking loose and losing track. It was like a carom shot on the billiard table. Also involved there, Daniel Hemrick. And that is going to be the fifth yellow flag in this Food City 500. And a pretty scary moment, but one of these moments where a lot of the guys up front, Doug, are going, thank goodness we get to woe this thing down. They had backed it down to 17.8 second laps as, again, they were trying to find the pace to protect their right side tires. I want to remind you that today's broadcast is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. They also sponsor Garage Pass, where I bring you a daily dose of NASCAR news throughout the week. And again, Progressive Insurance reminds you, you can protect your home and auto, save when you bundle, get a quote at Progressive.com. You're listening to PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Buddy Baker is back in Victory Circle after just five tries in 1971. Your family and Buddy Baker have a history. The long history of Buck and my granddad racing against Buddy's dad. Buddy came to drive for my dad in 71, 72, right along there, drove that white Dodge number 11. They always called him the General John. And Buddy would come over to the house. Sometimes he would bring his son, Brian, who was about my age, and we'd go motorcycle riding. Buddy Baker was a great motorcycle rider. We'd go out through the woods, and man, he would do some stuff. My dad would just cut along on that little motorcycle he had. Buddy would have his on the back wheel, in the gas, running hard. 
Ryan and my dad would ride together, and I would ride with Buddy because they would put along, and I would ride with Buddy. But Buddy was just that guy who always was just so kind to me. Even when I started racing, and we'd go to Daytona, you'd go to Talladega, where he had lots of success. You could sit and talk to him, and he would tell you things. You could use his brain, and he tried to help. Under our fifth caution here at Bristol Motor Speedway, 178 laps complete of our 500 communication. I've never heard on the radio before from Kyle Larson and crew chief Cliff Daniels. Kyle Larson's opinion of what's happening with the right side tires, he feels like we should actually throw a red flag, park the cars, let NASCAR put that PJ1. Cliff Daniels said it wouldn't take that much time to spray the track, let it settle, and then get to racing. This is a big issue on pit road. But right now, there's no communication, according to Cliff Daniels, on what they can do with the right side tires if they're going to get the extra set that we know Goodyear is already mounting up but has not been released if extra tires will be given to the teams. That's great intel, Wendy. By the way, Chase Elliott was in that mix, not to the extent that we thought he was. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Daniel Hemrick seemed to get the worst out of this little altercation up there, and Chase Elliott got rushed up a little bit in the back of the pack. It's our fifth yellow flag of the day. Mark NASCAR has shown right now they're going to stretch these yellows. They're going to milk as much of this race under the yellow flag as they possibly can. So what they do is they bring out these little elves and sweeper trucks, and they're trying to get that dust and that tire rubber up off the racetrack because it's not going into the track. It's just pulverizing and then collecting up at the turn. It's trying to kill two birds with one stone. They're cleaning the racetrack, and they're burning some laps, and I think we're going to need that with the tire wear we are seeing. Let's go back down to Bradley Miller. Hey, Chase Elliott was saying that they're going so slow that basically the track is making it more difficult. He said that basically at the beginning of that wreck that the car kind of jerked up the hill because the speed is so slow. That's the handling issue we had that caused the beginning of that last incident. You know, Doug, these cars, you and I have done the NASCAR experience. They're so good at making them turn left. You go into the corner, and the banking takes the car and nearly jerks it to the left right out of your hand. You don't have to do a whole lot. So you can see what Chase Elliott's talking about. If you don't have that speed, it doesn't hook up and move to the left like it normally does. Let's go to Brad Gilly. Mark, this might be one of the more important sets of tires that come off of these race cars. They just made about a 35-lap run under green, and it's really interesting to hear the comments on the radio. You know, we're having to go out here and do some Mickey Mouse stuff, or this feels like we're plate racing, but they were well off the pace, obviously trying to conserve tires, and the teams now are wondering, what does this set look like? Because they don't feel like they wore them down to the boards, and this is going to change it for a lot of teams. It will give them an idea of just how hard they can run, whether that was too soft or whether they can go harder. We're about to find out after this set of pit stops. 50 laps since the last pit stop. Ty Gibbs leads them onto the pit lane. Wendy Venturini. I know Josh Berry's report was don't touch the race car. He's happy with it. Despite the slow speeds, everybody's having to do here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Kyle Larson's going to come down. Cliff Daniels is waiting to see what that right side tire is going to look like as well. It's mostly uh, Joey Logano right here. Front he's coming in for four tires. Kyle Larson takes four tires as well. Brad Gilly. Field, who's pitted on the front stretch, is now making their way around. My first car in that. Sixth place running Brad Keselowski. Eases into his pit box right now. It's going to be a routine four-tire change. Denny Hamlin coming in as well as Justin Haley. Again, a routine four-tire change. They will top him off with Sunoco Race Fuel. Remy Billen. Martin Truex Jr. is in. A routine four-tire change for him. No adjustments. We'll take a look at the tires once they get off and see how they look. So, coming off the pit lane... Chris Buescher picks up four spots. Ty Gibbs second, Martin Truex Jr., Christopher Bell, Todd Gilliland up 12 spots to fifth. Then Kyle Larson followed by Joey Logano as we go back to Wendy Venturini. I'm looking at the right side tires off of Kyle Larson's car. I do not see any cords. I'm about a foot away from Crew Chief Cliff Daniels. He's checking them out with his bare hands right now. They look a little bit better than the last time, so this could have been a matter of the drivers backing up their drivability out there and the speeds out there, but no courts this time around. Well, no 
there was no doubt about it. I mean, you could almost tell without the benefit of a stopwatch that they were slowing down. Back over to Brad Gilly. Yeah, that's the same on my end of pit road. These look like normal tires coming off of the race car right now. Denny Hamlin lost a bunch of spots. Justin Haley is pitted right between Brad Keselowski and Denny Hamlin. Hamlin is the first pit box on the front straightaway side. Haley keeps having to drive around Hamlin. The back of his car was sticking out. When Denny backed up to go around, he ended up stalling the race car. One interesting thing as well, you talk about all the powder from the tires that is up on the racetrack. Well, when these tires come off of the race cars, it dumps a bunch of powder here on pit road. This is the dirtiest I have ever seen pit road. Wendy Venturini. Okay, my report's changing on this side of pit road. Josh Berry's four tires are off. His race car cords are showing on the right front for the four of Josh Berry. Also cords showing on Joey Logano's machine on his right front. So different drivers are showing different wear. Not as bad as the last time out there, but we do have cords on our right side tires. We've had 12 different leaders, 31 lead changes already. We still have 316 laps to go. Doug, you said the record was? 40. 1991, 40 lead changes. I, I feel like that that's definitely in jeopardy here today. Absolutely, because I think, Doug, the trick is to get out front and how much can you back it down without getting run over. It's going to be a little bit of a trick. You're going to have to sometime give and take the lead back and forth, and I think we'll see that the rest of the afternoon so we get back to the final 50, 75 laps, and then they'll go after it as hard as they can, again, still trying to protect the right side tire. But we're nearly two-fifths of the way through this race, and I'm going to be honest, I don't have a feel for who's really good and who may be out to lunch because of the kind of hiccup nature of how we've had to conduct this race. No doubt about it, stop and go, the tire issues, everything going on here. And I want to remind you, the all-star race is coming up at North Wilkesboro Speedway. They've got a great ticket. $259. It's a week-long ticket package. Two nights of Z-Max Cars Tour, late models, the NASCAR Pit Crew Challenge, all the practice, all the qualifying sessions, two concerts, Trackside Live with Kenny Wallace and John Roberts, and then five NASCAR races. And if you buy that before April 1st, you also get a free Dale Jr. die-cast car. We hope to see you back up at North Wilkesboro Speedway for their second time around with the all-star race on the brand new pavement at North Wilkesboro Speedway. And right now they're still creeping around under the yellow flag. Mark, I did learn a couple of cool things today when I got to go down and wave the green flag. There's a great big piece of tape up on the flag stand that shows when the stage breaks are. So, so they, they, they never have to doubt 125, 250, and the rest of it. Kind of, kind of thought that was neat. And the flag stand here moves around. It, it When the cars come by, it, it wobbles a little bit. So you felt the thunder. I did feel the thunder, and I was kind of glad to come kind of down back off of there and not feeling anymore. It was a great experience. Appreciate the folks here at Bristol Motor Speedway and the people at Food City for giving up that uh, spot and let me go at it today. I'm surprised you didn't bring any cake back to the booth. There has been cake today. I've had ample birthday cake here at Bristol. This is my birthday on St. Patrick's Day. Uh, I got one in the media center today. Uh, Bristol Motor Speedway delivered an, a bun cake up here to the booth. I have had happy birthday sang to me by Caitlin Vinci and by Noah Peters, the guy that did the national anthem in the media center. I've had a full, full day for my birthday here in Bristol. What is a bunt cake? I've okay. never known what that is. It's like is. the one that we've got right up here. <laughs> <laughs> but why do they call it a bunt cake? Because they're not taking a swinging strike. They're just funny yet. <laughs> All, right. All right, let's uh, give you the top ten here. It's Chris Bush or Martin Trex Jr., Christopher Bell, Todd Gilliland, and Kyle Larson, Joey Logano, John Hunter Nemechek, Brad Keselowski, Josh Berry, and Ryan Blaney. That top ten brought to you by Liberty University, where you can win one of several scholarships in the LU $2474,000 scholarship giveaway. Go to liberty.edu slash 24. They are going to extend this yellow. So let's give you the rest of the top 20 here. It will be Ryan Priest in 11th, 12th, Daniel Suarez, Chase Briscoe is 13th, Justin Haley 14th, Cas Grala 15th, 16th, Alex Bowman, Corla Joy 17th, Michael McDowell 18th, 19th, Chase Elliott, and 20th is Eric Jones. So again, 11 leaders, 30 lead changes in this race, or 31 now we're being listed at again, 28 drivers still on the lead lap of a 
very bizarre race that we have not got a clue how this thing is going to end. I'm Mark Carroll with Doug Rice, Rob Albright, turns one and two, our pit reporters, Wendy Venturini, Brad Gilly, Brett McMillan. Boy, are they busy this afternoon. Lights are out. Uh, the pace car, it'll be heading to pit road. We're getting set to go back to Green Flag Racing with 61 laps to go in stage number two of the Food City 500. NASCAR has released now a, an extra set of tires. Green Flag is back out. Chris Busher on the outside trying to fight off Christopher Bell, who's down on the yellow line. Two different faces up front. New race leader Chris Busher over Bell. Our Craig Jr. Booth on the score. Past winner here at Bristol, Christopher Bell leads in the next in line. It's our Christopher Busher leads, and it's Chris Bell trying to get around it. Bell goes to work on the inside of Busher off turn two. Busher will have the advantage in turn number three, but Bell all over his back bumper. Chris Busher out front. His mom would prefer Christopher. He likes Chris. He's trying to hold off Christopher Bell. Here comes Martin Truex Jr. Two Christophers and a Martin up front. They're about five car lengths ahead of the third place fight. Now that's between Kyle Larson and John Hunter Niemicek. Busher leads to Bell in second. Third place right now is going to be Martin Truex Jr. Ford a pair of Toyotas. And that's the Chevy of Kyle Larson. John Hunter Niemicek riding in fifth. Things single file all the way back to the eighth position. That's where... Brad Kozowski will do battle with the, the, the car of Daniel Suarez. He's moving forward. John Hunter Dimechek now trying to ride around the outside of Kyle Larson. Looks like he'll get it done. Now here comes Logano and Todd Gilliland. Check having a good day as we approach the halfway point of this race side by side with Kyle Larson for that fourth position. Halfway will be the stage two break, by the way, as Busher leads Bell, Truex. Nemechek is going to slide around Larson on the outside and pick up four. Things sort of calm at the moment with the front eight running nose to tail single file on the bottom of the racetrack. Suarez is the only one up top. He's trying to battle Josh Berry for the eighth spot. First time today Suarez has been in the lead pack. He is now up, as we see it, 20 spots. So how hard do you work if you're uh, Daniel Suarez and the guy right in front of him, Todd Gilliland, who's also moved into the top side as he's working on Madonna. We'll see if anybody wants to challenge for the lead here. Bell rides in second behind Busher. Momentarily, it was uh, Joey Logano who went to the outside of Kyle Larson. Now he thinks better of it and drops back behind. It is now Josh Barrett and Todd Gimbalay battling side by side for seven. Again, they're backing down the speed. 16.8 second laps now as they work their way back to 17 seconds again, trying to woe down enough to save the right side tire. Just outside the top ten, it is... Uh, Briscoe, takes Briscoe, he's working the outside of his teammate, Ryan Priest, for position. I've been watching Brad Keselowski all day, Mark. He's hung out between 5th and 10th all day. I just get a sense that that old veteran out there is pacing himself, trying to stay out of trouble, but also not pushing the issue. Kind of easing his way up now. He moves around Todd Gilliland, moved Keselowski now up to 8th. And, Doug, do you think this race maybe is playing to a Josh Berry, a late model driver? This is what they do. They are in a tire-saving mode just about all the way through when he's running like a car store event. And Josh Berry's also got a really good car here today, too. I think that has a lot to do with it. But you're right, Mark. This may play to a little bit of that savvy battle for the lead here, Rob Albright. Seabell says, enough of this. I'm going to swing around and get past Busher. So what Christopher gives up the lead to Christopher. Bell over Busher. Busher about to lose second now to Mark Truex Jr. who wants to hit his outside. 13 leaders now. 32 lead changes. Here is Bell leading them out of turn four and immediately Truex starts to reel him in. Black, white, and Irish green. The third, new third place driver. That is John Hunter Nemechek. Near disaster in turn two. A car very slow. That is Justin Haley. Haley went up the track, and Ryan Blaney was in a big hurry also out there last time. Daniel Suarez caught a shot from Ryan Blaney on the edge of the two. Bell takes him back to two. So mid-pack, it's a real hornet's nest. Things sl slowly sorting out in among the top ten of single file. Suarez is backing through the field. There's a log jam back there. Corey LaJoy along with Suarez. Chase Elliott is in that mess. So is Eric Jones, Ty Gibbs, Harrison Burton, Alex Bowman, and Bubba Wallace. So Gibbs trying to find some clean racing place to work. He moves to the outside of the racetrack. He now puts a bumper to Chase Elliott on the bottom side. Chase Elliott down on the bottom of the racetrack right now, trying to find any kind of race room. Can't do it. He's got Ty Gibbs blinded to his outside. Right in front of them, Suarez is the one who's been backsliding. So Ty Gibbs says, that's fine. I'll just drive around you. And in the process, he'll go around Ford and joint and work on Briscoe. Brad Keselowski looking for a twofer. He overpowers 
the Josh Berry machine on the outside and flies by his teammate, Chris Buescher. Buescher leading laps, just a few laps to go. He's now split back to the 8th position, about the going staff, the Cass Grala. Mark, there is a little bit of irony here that a lot of people, including the drivers, have been asked for a tire that falls off. Well, careful what you ask for. They're getting it here today as there's a lot of tire fall off, and it feels like they're starting to get their arms wrapped around this situation. We'll back up. We'll save the tires because you heard all of our pit reporters last time say those tires didn't look anything like the tires that came off in the previous fourth caution. You notice, Doug, they're trying to hug the inside line now, staying in the resin. Maybe that will help the tire wear. And Rob Albright just mentioned Kaz Grala. That's a surprise. He's running in the eighth spot, looking pretty racy. And Kaz will work his way now down into turn number one. He's on the back bumper of Josh Berry. Just took a position away from Todd Gilman and right in front of Berry. The guy we've been talking about a lot, that's Brad Kazowski. He's just showing a lot of patience. Talking about Kaz, Grala drops under Josh Berry. He will pick up another spot that's going to move Grala, I believe, up to seventh, Rob. He is riding in the seventh position. Next up on his hit list will be the uh, car of Brad Kazowski. That's right orange machine as he dives into three. Meanwhile, out front, Christopher Bell now beginning to get a little bit of heat from Martin Truex Jr. 40 laps to go here in stage number two. Things spread out among the top five. Bell's lead over Truex, about two car lengths, five back to Nemechek, five more back to Logano, and number three back to Larson. Seems like everyone's kind of calmed down their pace here. Top ten here with lap 210. Christopher Bell, Martin Truex Jr., John Hunter Nemechek, Joey Logano, Kyle Larson, and it's Brad Keselowski, Cotton Kaz, Grala, Josh Berry, Ty Gibbs, and Todd Gilliland rounding out the top ten. I wish you might call very good at hide and seek. And since we got Xfinity, we have Wi-Fi all over the house, even in my super secret hiding spots. So I can kill time in here by streaming my favorite pop found ya. Help! Left to find my tablet on. Get wall to wall Wi Fi on the Xfinity 10G network. Restrictions apply, not available in all areas. Actual speeds vary. This is NASCAR racer Michael Waltrip with Echo Park, the official used car of Speedway Motorsports. I'm inviting you to Echo Park's Coffee Cup Series. This NASCAR season, me and Echo Park will be arriving to the tracks early to meet fans over a cup of coffee and check out some of their cars. Plus, you can win a VIP ticket upgrade and ride in a pace car. Woo Talk about a whole new meaning to pre-rate jitters. Echo Park. Every car, happy owner. Is your insurance playbook too confusing? Make it easy. Switch to GEICO and get all your insurance coverage from one place. Go to GEICO.com today and get started. From Bristol Motor Speedway, this is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. If you have a chance to make a difference in a kid's life, you need to take full advantage of that opportunity. For those kids to know somebody has their back, somebody that's caring about them, thinking about them when they feel like nobody is. Anything that I can do now to support Speedway Children's Charities, I do because I've seen the work firsthand. We owe it to children, no matter where they come from. Unfortunately, there is no end to some of the terrible atrocities in our world. Speedway Children's Charity is going to feel really good that we are getting the, the most good out of every dollar that's given. At Speedway Children's Charities, our mission is simple. Help every child we can. Because all children deserve joy and hope and love. And if one child is still in need, then there's still work to do. Because their future is our future. And there's still so much they can teach us. Find out more at speedwaycharities.org. Back here at Bristol, 220 laps down, 500 make up the race, 280 to go. And Rob Albright, we've got Christopher Bell leading, Truex riding second. It seems like collectively these drivers have decided, okay, we're going to ease up a little bit and just let this race unfold. And then you have a couple of guys that will get impatient and just start picking up positions. That's what Ty Gibbs has done over the last eight or ten laps. He's moved up about ten spots. He's now riding fourth, so it's three Joe Gibbs racing Toyotas occupying the top four spots, separated only by the third-place car of John Hunter Nemechek. We still have 28 cars on the lead lap. The first car one lap down is Austin Sindrick. 
Kyle Busch is next in line, and he is a single lap down. So we'll watch the distance between Cindric and Kyle Busch as they try to fight their way back into that lucky dog position. Watching right now, Christopher Bell's DeWall machine leads Truex, but Truex wants to peek to the inside as they roll into turn three. Truex down on the bottom of the racetrack, and he made that look easy, Rob Albright. God, I don't know if there was communication maybe between spotters and drivers, and Truex's spotter man told him, Bell's going to give you the lead, let you send the pace for just a little bit while. But they both seem content with that move. That is the 33rd lead change here today at Bristol, and we are not halfway. So I think now, Mark Garrett, that the drivers kind of identified, okay, we've got to race a certain way. It was the wild, wild west for the first 50 laps. Everybody's figured out what they need to do now, and they've adapted. And they're trying to protect the right side front and rear tire, Doug. And again, we're looking at them backing down now, the leader running 17-second laps. Everybody else, 17-1, 17-2, they are in a protect mode. As we watch Brad Keselowski now, who's been a solid fixture all day long in the top five. He got around Chris Buescher. He has moved up to fourth in that Kings Hawaii machine. And we've got problems off of turn two. It's going to be Kyle Busch spins around, and he'll bring out the sixth yellow of the day. Looked like from this vantage point, maybe a solo spin there for Kyle Busch. But it brings out the yellow nonetheless for the sixth time today here at the Food City 500. There's no limit to the fun and excitement to be had at Texas Motor Speedway for a triple header weekend in 2024. All three NASCAR series will take to the track for a Texas-sized weekend of racing action. 2024 is going to be bigger and better than ever, with more camping fun for everyone, including an incredible camper shindig like only Texas can do. Three days jam-packed with racing action and a no-limit experience you'll only get Shell Rotella motor oil at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Shell Rotella provides triple action to help control wear, deposits, and emissions, and adapts to your driving conditions. Right now, save $5 on all one-gallon Shell Rotella products. Limit supply. See your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store or O'ReillyAuto.com. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Kyle Busch involved in spin brings out caution flag number six on the day here in the Food City 500. From Bristol, this is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. I didn't hate the NASCAR races playing out. I didn't hate a race that was two hours and 15 minutes for a change. I didn't hate that the best car at those two races won. We're not going to see a barn burner every single time we race. Unfortunately, every race is just unpredictable. Some are going to have more cautions than others, whether you have restarts or not. I do, though, like the reset and, and having a pause point at the end of each stage. Your rally Auto Parts Fair reporters on the Performance Racing Network. There's no limit to the fun and excitement to be had at Texas Motor Speedway for a triple header weekend in 2024. All three NASCAR series will take to the track for a Texas-sized weekend of racing action. 2024 is going to be bigger and better than ever, with more camping fun for everyone, including an incredible camper shindig like only Texas can do. Three days jam-packed with racing action and a no-limits experience you'll only get Texas Motor Speedway. We're back at Bristol Motor Speedway with this PRN broadcast of the Food City 500. Don't forget, next week, we're going to be in Austin, Texas at the Circuit of the Americas. On Saturday, we have Cup Series qualifying at 10.30 Eastern Time. Uh, then we have the Focused Health 250 at 2.30, I'm sorry, 4.30 on Saturday afternoon. Then at 2.30 Sunday is the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix. Always love going down there, world-class facility outside of Austin, Texas, and we have a lot of fun broadcasting that. We have to take not a small army, but a big army of folks because it is such a big racetrack. And Alan Cavana will be working with us next week in a turn capacity along with a lot of other folks. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We always have a great time when we head down to Austin, Texas. So apparently Martin Turex Jr. is out front. He's had a decent start to the season, 15th in the Daytona 500, 12th. At Atlanta, uh, along with, of course, Las Vegas, then 
or rather 12th at Atlanta, then 7th place finishes at Las Vegas and Phoenix. And again, he's led four out of the five opening races, Doug, so it looks like he's gotten 2024 off to a pretty solid start. As far as Bristol's concerned, boy, could he use a little luck here. Only four top tens and 34 starts for Martin Truex Jr. here in Thunder Valley. Not been a great place for him. Mark, we talked a little bit about Kaz Grala, who's riding around in ninth right now. Josh Berry, he qualified on the front row, but he's hung around in the high rent district. He's not been languishing around in the back. He got back there one time through the pit stop rotation, but he's been a solid top ten car today, and as we talked about yesterday in our qualifying show, it's a guy that desperately could use just a little bit of daylight. If he can come out of here with a top ten, Josh Berry will consider this a win. And, Doug, I really think that this race is playing to his strength. Again, that late model background, when you run a 150-lap race, and I think either you don't get to change tires, or most times maybe just outside uh, uh, tires, right side tires, you've got to manage tires just about all race until it comes to giddy up time at the end. So this may be playing to some experiences that Josh Berry, as a Cars Tour champion and a short track champion, just might play into his hands. Let's go to Wendy Venturini. Five laps before that caution, Kyle Busch reported that his tires were gone, and he just lost it right there when he went for a spin just a few laps ago. We're patiently waiting for the cars to come down pit road, but we're hearing a lot of people that are going to put on their scuff tires. One of them being Christopher Bell has a qualifying set with three lap scuffs. We only have four sets of tires left back here, so it will be scuffs this time around for Christopher Bell. Brad Gilly. Yeah, scuff tires on my end as well for self drivers. John Hunter Nemechek, who's currently running in the fifth spot, that's what's up on the wall for them. Brad Gislowski, meanwhile, just in front of him, he's got a set of sticker tires that they have on the wall ready to go right now. And this is going to be an interesting scenario because we're winding it down toward the end of stage number two, and this racing's about to be different, maybe only for 10 laps or less, because they're going to be able to get after it. Brent McMillan. Well, the teams are all noted that NASCAR's running as many laps as possible under the caution, and uh, Ryan Blaney, one of the guys, started in the front, but he struggled. So he really needs some help in the turns. He also is going to put some scuffs on. Pit Road is open. Let's go to Wendy Venturini. Christopher Bell and crew chief Adam Stevens, they gave him kudos for being disciplined on saving those right side tires. He's been a little bit free, but he feels pretty good in the race car. No adjustments. Like I said, it's three lap scuff tires, and it's just the right side. Brad Gilly. Denny Hamlin's crew is ready for him to come in. Scuff tires in their hand. Justin Haley's crew just called it audible. Scuff tires ready to go over the wall for them. I mentioned Brad Keselowski. They have a set of sticker tires they're going to jump over the wall with. They're coming in on my end of pit road, Brad Keselowski slides in. Right in front of him, John Hunter Nemechek. Four tires, so no go race fuel. Brent McMillan. Martin Truex Jr. is already in. They've got around on the right side of his car. And as a matter of fact, they're looking at a four-tire change for him. And they're doing a four-tire change. It is Ryan Blaney. They've got around to the right side of his car. They're putting scuffs on for him on the right side. And he goes with a two-tire change. And a 5.2-second stop. They said, you can go hard, but not long to the end of the stage. So, again, first off, Christopher Bell, Nemechek, Logano, Hamlin, Larson, that is the top five. And, oh, by the way, Doug Rice, Salty Doxy Mama has tweeted that the reason they call it a bunt cake, it is baked in a bunt pan. And there you go. So, we have one back here. That but what is a bunt pan? No, it's a pan with a hole in the middle. Okay. All right. So, I got it. Thank you. I've never I'll watched my big mom wedding, have you? No, I have not. You need to watch that. You'll know more about it. I that. now know everything I need to know no, you, about you, you, you need to know a lot more. But anyway, uh, Mark, one of the points that we need to make here, this is the same tire that Goodyear brought here last year when we ran on the concrete. This is not some grand experiment or let's put this out here and hope this works. Something about the racetrack has changed fundamentally. But as we watch, I think each one of these race teams, as this race goes on, will adapt. Frankly, I feel like the racing has been really entertaining. I don't have a problem with it. I'm sure that Goodyear did release all those tires. We watched the tire bus, which rolling them out of the Goodyear building down between turns one and two. Let's go back down the pit lane to Brad Gilly. Well, sitting here at John Hunter's pit, they had four tires ready to go for that number 42 Toyota Camry XSE. They made a two-tire change for him. Corey LaJoy is running out front right now. They had put on scuffs the last time around, by the way. They stayed out. This is going to be really interesting. 
Oh, that did not work. Remember Tyler Reddick tried that early on? He got eight up, and we got a quick yellow flag. So LaJoy and Hosevar, teammates at Spire Motorsports, they last pitted on lap 182, and we're now completing lap 237. This could not be a happy ending for those two. And it's not happy for Ryan Blaney right now, caught speeding on the pit lane, so he's having to make the obligatory trip down pit road and he will wind up at the back of the pack it'll be one to go when they get back here so tough break here for ryan blaney the pole sitter speeding on pit road and uh now you got to try to decide do i really go hard and try to use my tires to get some of that position back yeah that is going to be a tiptoe dance ryan blaney take your shots where you can save your tires where you can that will not easy task for the rainy NASCAR Cup Series champion. Let's set the field here, boys. Some teams did not come to pit road. Corey LaJoy did not pit. He'll be the race leader. Carson Hosev on the second. Christopher Bell third. John Hunter Nemechek fourth. Fifth to Ryan Blaney. Sixth, Joey Logano. Denny Hamlin is seventh. Eighth will be Kyle Larson. Martin Truex Jr. ninth. And tenth at the moment, Kaz Rolla. Ty Gibbs is going to be scored 11th. Blaney now took the opportunity to take on a little more gas this time down pit road. Pit road. So Gibbs is 11th, 12th, Brad Keselowski. The rest of our top 20 is going to be Josh Berry, Daniel Suarez, Bubba Wallace, Michael McDowell, Alex Bowman, Chris Buescher, Ryan Priest, and Chase Briscoe. Not that many laps to go in this stage. Only a dozen laps to go here in stage number two. And on the break, it is going to be Corey LaJoy getting away with a big push from Christopher Bell. A little bit of tire spin from Hosevar. He's got it going now, but he'll lose the second position to Joe Madonna as he goes by those fire racing teammates. Larson pops John Hunter Nemechek in the back bumper hard at the exit of turn two. They got bottled up behind Carson Hosevar, who is a rolling roadblock right now. He's in the middle of three wide in turn number one. Everybody's so far high and low going around it. Let's see if he can continue that. He's going all the way to the back. Now, Hosevar blocking traffic all the way through the pack as they race back to the line. It's Chris for Bell and Joey Logano. They've gotten away a little bit from John Hunter. Logano hasn't shown us much at all this afternoon, but he's all over the back bumper. Uh, Christopher Bell and those two are going at it. Here's Bell going up mid lane in turn four. They now move across the start finish line. It is going to be eight laps to go here in stage two. John Hunter Nemechek able to maintain pace. Logano gets into the left rear corner panel. Bell gets him sideways that allows him to bend on the car and then host the tail. That's about as subtle as a sledgehammer there for Logano trying to move Bell out of the way. He gets a nose underneath Christopher Bell as they roll back into one. Can he make the pass? I don't know. Side by side on turn two. Bell pitches him down and they bang doors exiting the second corner. As they work their way through turn number four, Bell on the outside, Logano on the bottom, and they get to the stripe. Logano has a slight lead on the inside. And there's a stage win and a playoff point at stake here. Let's see what happens. Bell is obviously not happening. He had to Logano, but he almost gets into the outside wall, trying to rough up Joey. Joey Logano wants that playoff point. Kind of season he's gotten off to. If he could get that, that'd be a big win for him. He pulls away from Bell. Coming hard on the outside is Bell's teammate, Ty Gibbs. Well, now take the second position and set his sights on Logano. Ty Gibbs, who won the opening stage, trying to win the second one as well. It's Logano to the strike. Four to go in stage number two. And cue the Jaws music, because here comes Keselowski. He'll work to the outside of Bell. From leading this race to fourth, and shortly fifth is John Hunter Nemechek flashing by on the outside. Three laps to go here in stage two. Logano leads. Ty Gibbs is within a car length, and then it's Keselowski hanging on to third. Well, let's see among these top five. They've separated themselves from the sixth place car at Truex. Just a couple of car lengths between race leader Logano and second running Gibbs. As they work through turns three and four, easing to the outside. Gibbs trying to challenge for the top spot. Logano tries to pinch him off. Can't do it. We've got two to go in stage two. Ty Gibbs very aggressively into turn one. Will he have the same kind of exit off two? Yes, Joey Logano just a bit of a wiggle. New race leader Gibbs. Ty Gibbs takes the lead away from Joey Logano. Now Keselowski putting on the heat with Logano with one to go here in stage two. On the paint straightaway, Logano pushed Keselowski almost up into the outside wall. It looks like Brad will not be denied. They'll race for the second Spot. As they work out of turn number four, Ty Gibbs won stage one. He'll do it again in stage number two as he takes the green and white checkered flag. Brad Kozlowski will finish stage two in the second spot. Joey Logano third, John Hunter Nemechek fourth, fifth Christopher Bell, sixth is Martin Truex Jr., Danny Hamlin seventh, 
eighth, Kyle Larson. Bubba Wallace, ninth. Also getting a point here in stage number two, Ryan Priest. Stage number two break brings out our seventh yellow flag of the day here in the Food City 500. Joey Legato here for Hunt Brothers Pizza, where you can choose from 10 toppings, all at no extra charge. In a hurry, call ahead to place an order or grab a hunk of pizza on the go. Follow me on the track all season long and visit HuntBrothersPizza.com to find your next pizza. Hey racing fans, William Byron here, driver of the number 24 Liberty University Chevy. I'm excited to tell you that Liberty is giving away $74,000 in scholarships. Winners can study online, like I'm doing, or at Liberty's beautiful campus in Virginia. Get your future on track today. Learn more about Liberty University's $74,000 scholarship giveaway at liberty.edu slash 24. Again, that's liberty.edu slash 24. By downloading the free PRN mobile app, you can listen to all of our live race broadcast anywhere. You'll also have easy access to all of our award-winning studio shows. Get all the latest racing information at your fingertips with the PRN mobile app. Today's Xfinity fastest lap goes to Martin Truex Jr., 122.850, but that was on lap two. They've all slowed down since then. Xfinity keep shown with ultra-low lag and a connection that you can rely on. NASCAR stream from the best seat in the house with Xfinity because it's only live once. Learn more at Xfinity. From the Food City 500 here at Bristol Motor Speedway, this is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Hey there, it's Kathy Martindale and Paul Shad on CMAX Racing Country Classic. And we're back. Come on to Nashville. It's Kathy and Vince Gill. Who do you find it hardest to keep up with, musicianship-wise? I just feel like an adequate guitar player compared to some of the people that I just love and admire and really think are spectacular. The majority of the people that I learned to play the instrument from are still around. I've been driving trucks for a long time. Safety is my number one priority. I know that my truck has huge blind spots. That's why I remember to check my mirrors often for smaller vehicles. Everyone can help keep our roads safe. Next time you're behind the wheel, try to avoid lingering in those blind spots. It could be dangerous. Let's all plan to share the road safely. Learn how at www.sharetheroadsafely.gov. We're under the stage two caution break here, Mark, and I am curious... A lot of teams hit it right before this break. Do you come back in again, or is this an opportunity to maybe gain some real estate? Which which is more important? You could go either way, but maybe some of the teams, Doug, that's why they switched off to scuffs, knowing they were going to come back pretty quickly at the end of the stage. We'll see if that's part of their strategy as well. Let's go to Brett McMillan. Well, I think you're exactly right, Mark. That's why a lot of them switched to scuffs, knowing that they're going to come back in pretty quickly. But if Martin Truex Jr. is not happy that they switched to scuffs, he feels like they would have been better off going with regular tires. James Small, his crew chief, said, well, they're only giving us one set of tires so far. Truex is convinced that they're going to give him more than one one set of tires, so we'll see how that plays out. I don't know if Truex has, you know, a great ESP to NASCAR or not, but we'll see how that works out, Brad Gillis. The stickers versus scuff debate was going on between Brad Keselowski and crew chief Matt McCall. Brad wants sticker tires. He says, I think we're going to slow down the pace again. We're probably going to get a 75 lap run. I want to have some sticker tires. Matt McCall was saying that, you know what, though? Here's one thing to consider, because they do have one set of scuffs and four sets of tires here in their pit box, is that because those scuff tires have been through a heat cycle, that they might actually wear longer. They want to save those. Wendy Venturini. All right, looks like NASCAR is going to open up pit road, and the green light does come on. And let's see how many takers, and it's Brad Gilly and Mark both said. They took those uh, scuffs last time around, get a short run out of them, and we'll see how many people want to come on the pit road and get fresh good years. They are led once again by Ty Gibbs. Let's go on the backstretch to Wendy Venturini. Joey Logano in third actually is going to get scuff tires because they took stickers last time. So Paul Wolf making that decision. Also, we will watch. Ty Gibbs took stickers left time the last time, and it is going to be a uh, two-tire stop for Joey Logano. No, four-tire stop for those scuff tires for Joey Logano. Also on pit road, Kyle Larson with four fresh tires as well. Those are stickers for Kyle Larson. Brad Gilly. Here comes the teams on the front. 
the stretch. Brad Keselowski eases into his pit box right in front of him. It's John Hunter Nemechek. Both of those teams going four sticker tires. Denny Hamlin on pit road as well. Crew goes to the left side of his Toyota. Four sets of sticker or four sticker tires for him. And they top him off with Sunoco. Brad Keselowski pulling out of his pit box. Had to drive around John Hunter Nemechek. Got hit by his teammate, Austin Sendrick, who is now in his pit box. Brett McMillan. And it was a four tire change for Martin Truex Jr. putting the sticker back on. But he also had a bit of a challenge trying to get out of his pit box. As A.J. Allmendinger was kind of sticking out uh, just a little bit further than you would like him. So Ty Gibbs, first one in, first one off, followed by Joey Logano, Martin Truex Jr., Christopher Bell, and up eight spots coming off debt lane, Todd Gilliland. So the field will reset when they come back around. We've still got cars that were a lap down that have to make their pit stops. Austin Dillon, by the way, got the free pass. He is back on the lead lap, making his pit stop now with his RCR team. And you can see Keselowski barely getting out. But boy, does Austin Sindrick hit him hard right in that right front tire just as Keselowski was turning. You don't want to want get hit in that right front, but you especially don't want to get hit when the wheels turn. And he got smacked. We'll see if that caused any lasting effects there to Brad Keselowski. Over to Brett McMillan. You know, we can talk about how the track has not been taking on rubber. Down here in the pits, what's coming off the tires when they change tires out here is unlike anything I've ever seen before. The best way to describe it is if you've seen a pouch of tobacco, that's what it looks like. And I've never seen anything like that before. Usually, you know, you see rubber pellets or bigger pieces of rubber, but this looks like what you would see if you opened a pouch of tobacco. And that's highly unusual. So at this point, again, Ty Gibbs has won the opening two stages, his first two stage wins in 2024, and he now will try to do what Kyle Larson did when we broadcast the Las Vegas race, win the first two stages, go on and get the win as well. Let's go back down now to Brad Gilly. Give you an update on Brad Keselowski, hit by his teammate Austin Sendrick, and this is as Brad was trying to drive around John Hunter Nemechek in front of him, and Sendrick was coming into his pit box. Right now they have a set of tow plates out, just in case it knocked the car out of tow. He was asked by his crew chief, Matt McCall, if his wheel felt any different. Brad said, really, it doesn't right now. If it does, maybe it's slightly, but I don't really notice it. They're prepared in case he needs to come in. To further that, then Brad was trying to correct the problem. He asked Matt McCall, did I just pit too far into my pit box? And they said, yes, you did. So part of that, Brad is taking on him for pitting too far into his pit box. And part of it's just circumstances with a lot of cars on pit road at one time. We still have a lot of cars on the lead lap here right now. 31 cars on the lead lap out of the 36 that started this race, and only one car is being listed out, and that is Zane Smith being shown as the 36 car. Doug, we're at 15 leaders, 39 lead changes, the record 40, and we still got 240 laps to go. I think the record is going down in flames. Now, Lee Spencer gave us that. Yeah, lead, right? saw, her, saw her push that out on Twitter a minute ago. Let's give you our ring leaderboard. Ty Gibbs is the race leader. Joey Logano is second, third. Martin Truex Jr. Christopher Bell is fourth. Todd Gilliland fifth. John Hunter Nemechek sixth. Seventh to Brad Keselowski. Eighth is Ross Chastain. Bubba Wallace ninth. And tenth, Kyle Larson. Then in the eleventh, it's Ryan Priest. Josh Berry twelfth. Thirteenth is going to be Harrison Burton. Eric Jones fourteenth. Fifteenth, Denny Hamlin. Kaz Rollo sixteenth. Seventeenth, Alex Bowman. Chase Elliott eighteenth. Nineteenth, Daniel Hemrick. Justin Haley in twentieth. 21st will be Daniel Suarez, 22nd, Michael McDowell, Ryan Blaney is 23rd, 24th, Chris Busher, Austin Dillon, 25th, 26th, Corey LaJoy, A.J. Elmendinger, 27th, 28th, Carson Hosevar, 29th, Austin Sindrick, Chase Briscoe is 30th. And then in 31st, Kyle Busch, he is behind the pace car. He's going to use the wave around to get back on the tail end of the lead lap. Minus one, Noah Gregson in 32nd. Minus two in 33rd, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Minus three, Tyler Reddick, 34th. 35th is going to be William Byron, minus six. The only driver right now that's a DNF in the Food City 500, Zane Smith. He'll get credit today for 36. That leaderboard update presented to you by Reen. Visit Reen.com to find a contractor near you. Reen, provider of new degree of comfort and proud sponsor of Christopher Bell, of course, in the number 20 Toyota as they continue to circle the field here. And Mark, we put the, we didn't put it out, NASCAR put out the flag at lap 250. It is lap 262.
too, so they have cruised around a dozen laps here. I think he's trying to milk a little bit more mileage out of these race cars. I think they have to, Doug, to play it safe. Now they have signaled the cars that were behind the pace car to use the wave around. I mentioned Kyle Busch in that group. Doug, Ty Gibbs has gotten the year off to a great start, finished 17th on the 500. 10th at Atlanta, 5th in Vegas, 3rd at Phoenix, led 57 laps last week. So Ty Gibbs has been inching his way towards perhaps his first Cup Series victory. This today, his 56th Cup start. We've been watching the Goodyear Tire Busters get the tires out of the Goodyear Tire Building here, and they've been stacking them up in stacks of four, and NASCAR just now relaxed them. And Mark, it's like rush hour at the buffet here because <laughs> everybody's over there with their little tire carriers hustling their four tires back. Some of the hardest workers we have at the racetrack, Doug, on a race weekend are the Goodyear Tire Busters, but they're not usually this busy during the race. Time to go racing again here. We'll be lap 234 when they come back to the line. That means we will have 237 laps remaining. Front row, Martin Truex Jr. to his outside, Ty Gibbs. The second row is going to be Christopher Bell. He'll be flanked by Joey Logano to his outside. Green flag is in the air, and it is going to be Ty Gibbs getting a nice jump on the field. As has been the case most of the afternoon, outside lane works to prevent it for Ty Gibbs. Truex settles in the second, and their teammate Christopher Bell third. Chase Briscoe had to go to the tail end of the field for a tire that got away from his pit crew. Here's Gibbs again leading them across the stripe, 235 laps to go. And they got immediately going to the outside of the racetrack at three and four the last time. Brad Kostowski, he's moved up to the sixth position as Gibbs stretches it out over Truex. Gibbs leads Truex, then it's going to be Bell, Logano, John Hunter, Nemechek, Keslowski. Keslowski getting a little heat here from Todd Gilliland. Single file among the top six, finally into the top ten for the first time today is Ross Chastain now showing the input of aggression on the back bumper of Keslowski. So to Keslowski's outside, it's Todd Gilliland banging on his back bumper, Ross Chastain. Now Kyle Larson will join that party. Larson will draw even with Chastain as they fight for the ninth position off turn number uh, two, and it is still a dead heat in the three. It really gets heated back there about John Hunter Nemechek in the fifth spot. Coming to his outside is going to be Gilliland, then it's Kalas Keslowski, Larson, and Chastain is up in the top ten for the first time. Now he's trying to get on the back bumper of Keslowski and get Keslowski to put the same pressure on Nemechek in front of him. Remember, Chastain started dead last in 36th. He's up 27 spots as he pressures Keslowski and Larson in turn one. He's just been quietly staying out of trouble, maybe saving the best for the last few while. Up front, Ty Gibbs still two car lengths ahead of Mark Truex Jr. Ty Gibbs on the point right now, and it's Truex next in line. Four car lengths back to Bell, ten back to Logano. The battle is going to be behind them with Nemechek and Gilliland. Well, Todd Gilliland doesn't seem too worried about tire wear as he's working very hard to get around John Hunter Nemechek as that pair sits on the back of the machine of Logano. So three Joe Gibbs Racing Toyotas out front. Again, last week they set a little bit of NASCAR history. All four of those drivers for the first time leading 50 or more laps. That has never happened with a four-car team before. Now again, Gibbs in turn three. Truex in his tire tracks right down on the black part of the turns where the resin is, and they're back to one. And Todd Gilliland just took the fourth position away from Joey Logano. Logano appears to be just going easily right now. John Hunter Nemechek right behind him, followed by Larson and Kislowski. Watching Denny Hamlin, he's on back in the pack a little bit. He's riding 12th right now. Mark, he's trying to make that outside work. Pick up his real estate here. And now here's Gregson to his inside, door to door there. Behind him, also door to door. Bubba Wallace inside, Hamlin on the outside. Bubba Wallace works inside. Hamlin, but no place for him to go. And Josh Berry sits right in his gun sockets. Josh Berry having a nice run here today. Right now, he hangs on to the fifth spot. Meanwhile, up front, it's still going to be Ty Gibbs. He has been a predominant player in today's race at this juncture. He has led 58 to Hamlin's 57. He'll lead this one here, Rob. Ty Gibbs qualified mid pack time, but he, once he got going, he came to the front. He stayed, like you say, pretty much up there. Three car lengths now, his lead over Truett. Watching now a bit of a traffic jam. Joey Logano running in the sixth spot. Has Larson to his outside. Right behind him is Brad Keselowski. And now here's Hamlin now digging hard on the top of the racetrack. This looks like Joey Logano is riding. He is not working really hard. Doesn't look like the car's out of shape. Trying to preserve tires. Now he's in jeopardy of losing another spot to Keselowski. You've been watching Keselowski. Remember, his car got hit by Austin Cindric in that right front wheel well. Mark Garrett doesn't look like the car.
wasn't too much of a problem. He's still running well. That is a big break for Keselowski, and you and I both saw the replay. I mean, he didn't just get bumped. That front tire got hit. So that's good news for Brad Keselowski trying to end a 102 race losing drought. The last man to win in the spring here at Bristol back in 2020, Brad Keselowski. Keselowski now over in turn two, and they've kind of settled down. The front eight or nine are all running single file, and markets like they've collectively agreed, we're going to be calm for a while. We know we've got this tire situation. We can't go on extremely long or extremely fast runs. So everybody is doing their best, as what we heard earlier from Randall Burnett, manage your tires. It's interesting to see how the leader gradually backs it down. 17 seconds, the last lap for leader Ty Gibbs. He and Truex are out front, have a little bit of space back to Christopher Bell. But again, Doug, they're easing the lap times ever so slightly down, again, to save those right side tires. We are past halfway, 281 when they cross the stripe this time. This race is 500 laps long. Denny Hamlin's still trying to make up some ground, Rob. He is, and right in front of him, uh, Kyle Larson has turned up the wind just a bit as he went to the outside of Todd Gilliland, and now Hamlin will try to accomplish the same thing. Joey Logano keeps sliding through the field. He's now fallen back to 13th. Cavs Grala goes around him, so now dropping back to 15th as Chris Buescher now tries to go around him. You kind of have to wonder at this point, is this intentional by Joey Logano? The car doesn't seem to be out of shape. He is steadily dropping in position. 283 laps on the board. The top five read like this. Ty Gibbs, Martin Truex Jr., Christopher Bell, John Hunter Nemechek, and Kyle Larson. Hear that? The sound of adorable little birds in your garden. And if you were here, you'd taste the two sweet but tiny tomatoes you grew all by yourself. But you're not here. Because your self-care happens when you're riding your motorcycle protected by Progressive on your way to the store for a pack of normal-sized tomatoes. So if you ride switch to Progressive, America's number one motorcycle insurer, without getting your hands dirty. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates not available in all states. Whether your engine runs daily or only when you need it, C-Max Micro Lubricant is the force you need against carbon buildup that can damage your engine. Combustion causes carbon and other harmful deposits to build up on your engine, fuel system, and transmission. And carbon is like sandpaper rubbing against your engine's internal parts. You don't want that. You want C-Max Micro Lubricant. It soaks into metal and keeps your vehicle running at peak performance. Find out more at CMAX.com or visit us on Facebook and Twitter. Protect your engine to the max with C-Max. Three Joe Gibbs Toyotas lead the way here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Uh, Martin Truex Jr. is the race leader. He took that away from Ty Gibbs. Gibbs has slid back to third. Meanwhile, in second is Christopher Bell. 213 laps to go. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Time to pull down on the handle and start rolling them here in Las Vegas Motor Speedway. The green flag flies at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. Well, the contest, the Coca-Cola 600. Texas Motor Speedway. Now Kislowski goes way up the racetrack. Here comes Harrison Burton. He rockets to the lead. Trouble. Car goes around. It's Chris Buescher. Joe Logano battles to the outside. They come back to the start finish line. Bubba Wallace looks inside. And now here's Byron. Takes a quick left to block him. They head back to one. Here goes. Jr. is out front for the fifth time this afternoon. We've now had 15 leaders for 40 lead changes. That ties the record. I think we're going to break it here before too long because we have still 207 laps to go in the Food City 500. Mark Carroll with Doug Rice. Raw Ball Bright in turns one and two. Our O'Reilly Auto Parts pit reporters, Wendy Venturini, Brad Kozlowski, and Brett McMillan. For the first time today, it's kind of calmed down a little bit. We got these three Joe Gibbs Toyotas leading the way. Truex, Bell next in line is Ty Gibbs, and then the interloper in there is John Hunter Nemechek. 
but that is another Toyota, so the front four are all Toyotas. And Doug, they're all on the bottom, and we look at the speed rundown, the top 10 cars all running 17 to 17.1 17 seconds. They're settling in a little bit to try to get some laps in. And Rob, I can see it here in a few laps, and it might be all four of the Joe Gibbs Toyotas on the Yeah, because Denny Hamlin is just going around the outside of Kyle Larson to put his Chevrolet back into the sixth position. Now, all five of the top running cars are Toyotas, four of the five from Joe Gibbs Racing. So Ty Gibbs has led the race seven times for 68 laps. Denny Hamlin six times for 57. Truex five times for 30. Christopher Bell twice for 28 laps. So just as it was last week at Phoenix, all four of the Joe Gibbs Racing Toyotas have spent time with the lead in this Food City. We need to pause 10 seconds now for station identification. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Welcome back to Bristol. 201 laps remain here in the Food City 500. I'm Doug Rice with Mark Garrow. Out in the turns, it's Rob Albright on Pitt Road. It's Brad Gilly. It's going to be Brett McMillan and Wendy Venturini. And our top five read like this. Martin Truex Jr., Christopher Bell, Ty Gibbs, John Hunter Dimacek, and Denny Hamlin, followed by Keslowski, Larson, Josh Berry, Todd Gilliland, and Justin Haley. As we are continuing... Here with this runaway of five Toyotas on the point. John Hunter Dimacek for Legacy Motor Club riding in fourth. And Denny Hamlin, Rob, I'm just watching. He He's playing, it seems like, the long game here today. And the guy behind him doing the exact same thing as Brad Kozowski. As we talked about, came in contact with Austin Cedric on the pit road. But that car still seems to be really strong. Things are tightening up. Dimacek moves to the bottom of the racetrack in turn number one. And guess what? Joe Gibbs, one, two, three, four. Hamlin now completes the pass on John Hunter Nemechek, and you're exactly right there, Rob. It's Truex, Bell, Ty Gibbs, and Denny Hamlin. And Mark Arrow, when these kind of things happen and all 14 cars are leading, uh, I feel like that is past coincidence. Uh, absolutely. You have to bring a big smile to uh, Joe Gibbs. I saw one of their top guys from JGR this morning, Todd Barrier. Thought they would have good cars. And, Doug, they have a new car, this Toyota Camry TRD. And they were bad issues with speed at Daytona, but it raced well. It raced better the next week in Atlanta, and they have got that car progressively better each and every week. All right, let's check in over on pit road on the back side of the pit lane here with Wendy and Green. Well, we saw Denny Hamlin just take a peek and pass some race cars. Behind him is Kyle Larson on my end of pit road, who has 40 laps on their tires. He wanted to know why Hamlin was picking up the pace because it was the understanding everyone was keeping a slower pace, but... stitched together a pretty good day here at Bristol as calm seems to be raining right now 192 laps to go so a lot of race left to play out here Mark Doug it has been a little bit overcast most of the day although the sun peaked in and out for a while but the lights are more overcast if you will here as the sun goes down trouble trouble in turn two Josh Berry has gone around I'm not sure if he made contact with the outside wall a couple of guys took very quick action to avoid colliding with him. He will continue on, but under caution. So Josh Berry has an incident out of turn two. And that will bring out our eight.
Hi, it's BRN's Brad Gilly. Did you know you can take BRN with you anywhere? That's right. By downloading the BRN mobile app, you can listen to our live race broadcast from anywhere. Make sure you don't miss a second of the action from the track. Download today for station listings and on-demand access to your favorite studio shows like Fast Talk, Big Reporters, or Garage Pass. Get all the latest racing information at your fingertips with the BRN mobile app. Available in the Apple App Store and on Google Play. Hey, I'm Corley Joy for Speedway Children's Charities. The mission for Speedway Children's Charities has remained true since its founding almost 40 years ago. To care for children in educational, financial, social, and medical needs in order to help them lead happy and productive lives. So many children have benefited from our group in the past, but we need your help now more than ever. There's so much we can do when we all join together, so let's start today. Visit SpeedwayCharities.org to learn more. I thank you in advance for your help. today for a total of now 79 laps here at Bristol in the Food City 500. It has been tire conservation, tire management, whatever you want to call it. Each one of these teams working to save their tires. Goodyear has released an additional set of tires for the teams to use, and those have all been distributed. We only have one car out of the race, and that was Zane Smith. So 35 cars still running. William Byron is 35th. He is minus six laps in. Uh, as far as cars still on the lead lap, a whopping 30 cars here this deep into this race, Mark. Partly that's because we've not had big, long green flag runs, and that's where teams go a lap down. And that's one of the reasons, Doug, of course, for all these lead changes. 40, we have tied the record. We've had 15 different leaders of this race, and the tie, the Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota is the top lap leaders right now, with Gibbs again 68. Hamlin 57, Truex 49, and Bell with 28. We'll see how all of that shakes out. By the way, we mentioned Josh Berry bringing out this yellow. He has been able to continue on, and as he rolls in front of us right now, Mark, his car doesn't look that bad. No, he spun by himself. The other drivers did a good job dodging him, uh, both uh, high and low, as he spun up there in turn number two. So he is going to be able to win the fight another day. Mark, you made a good point under a moment ago off air. And the, but since these pit crews are getting a workout today, because a lot of times we'll go to a race and we might have long green flag pit stops and they're not having to hop over the wall. They're getting work today. Well, they absolutely are, Doug, and they're making more pit stops than usual here at Bristol Motor Speedway. And they, these are the most pit stops they've had to make in any single race so far in 2024. We're about to find out the teams that are in shape. By the way, our pit report is, as always, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. O'Reilly Auto Parts, your professional parts people. As we're watching right now, Martin Truex Jr. will leave that slow motion parade down the backstretch pits and wind up in front of Wendy Venturini. It was a team effort up and down pit road to get that extra set of tires together for every car on pit road. Christopher Bell will come to his stop directly in front of me. It's going to be sticker tires. The rear tire changer almost just slipped coming around to the left side of the car. Four tires fuel. Also, Ty Gibbs on pit road for four fresh tires. That's no go fuel, Brad Gilly. Cruise on front straightaway pit road are coming in now. Here comes Denny Hamlin. He slides in from the fourth position. And boy, does he slide. And the front tire is locked up. It'll be a four tire change. Send his car freed up during the run to Kansas Sunoco. Brad Gislowski, John Hunter Nemechek, also in for four tires in Sunoco. Brent McMillan. Martin Truex Jr. says the car is pretty neutral right now. He's getting a four-tire change. His only concern is what happens if he has to push it later on. A 12.4 second stop for him. Chase Elliott said the right rear is pretty much used up. He said the car was too tight, so they're going to give him a left side chassis adjustment as he finishes up his four-tire change. Great stop by Denny Hamlin's crew. He'll have the lead off of pit road, followed by Christopher Bell, Ty Gibbs. Then it looks like Martin Truex Jr., Kyle Larson, Brad Keselowski, and John Hunter Nemechek. And that's the way they'll set up and line back up here as far as the field concerned after the eighth yellow flag of the day. And what's been a wildly competitive race, as we said, we have tied the number of lead changes, and we've had 15 different leaders today. And let's get an update on the Sunoco fuel strategy. We'll go down to Brad Hill. You know, here's an interesting, Doug, is uh, the interesting thing is we just clicked off lap 318. That means we have 180 laps till the end of this race. 
Believe it or not, they could almost go that far if they needed to on Sunoco Race Fuel here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Obviously, what we've seen with the tires, that's definitely not going to happen. But I will say, with the tires and the pace that they've been running, they could actually probably make it about 180 laps. Not something we're going to have to do here today, but I can promise you the crews with the Sunoco fuel can sitting on the scales right now are still monitoring their fuel mileage. We're coming back here during the playoffs. They're going to want to know what these cars did here in the spring. From fueling your favorite NASA car teams to filling up the pump. Sunoco is trusted to help vehicles perform at their peak. Sunoco, performance is what we do. NASCAR, just before they made the pit stops and switched it back to 39 lead changes, then we're right back to a record time 40th with Danny Hamlin leading the field off of pit road. And that was a result of our eighth yellow flag of the day. Still a lot of race to play out here. We have only used up about three-fifths of this race. 180 laps to go when they come back to the line. As we have articulated a couple of times today, NASCAR is going to be the longer with the caution, trying to help these teams manage this tire situation, which has given us a whale of a race up to this point. Absolutely, Doug. Do you have a clue who might win this thing? I don't. I, uh, I, Ty Gibbs is very fast. I think if everybody's equal, he might be a little bit more equal, but that depends upon your track position and getting in and off the pit road. I say he's very fast because he won the first two stages. Let's give you a Hunt Brothers pizza leaderboard. Denny Hamlin is the race leader. Christopher Bell is second. Ty Gibbs is third. John Hunter Nemechek will be riding fourth, fifth to Kyle Larson. Brad Keselowski is 6th, John Hunter Nemechek is 7th, Ryan Blaney is 8th, Todd Gilliland 9th, and 10th will be Justin Hayden. Michael McDowell 11th, 12th, Kaz Rala, 13th, Josh Berry, Bubba Wallace 14th, 15th, Ross Chastain, Alex Bowman is 16th, Eric Jones 17th, 18th is Chase Briscoe, his Stuart Haas racing teammate, Brian Priest 19th, Austin Dillon has fought his way from a lap down back up to 20th. 21st will be Chris Busher, Corey LaJoy 22nd, 23rd. Carson Hosevar, 24th is A.J. Allmendinger, Daniel Emmerich is 25th, 26th, Joey Logano, Chase Elliott, 27th, Austin Cedric, 28th, Daniel Suarez, 29th, and 30th is Noah Gregson. Kyle Busch, last car on the lead lap at 31st, in 32nd, minus two laps, Ricky Stenhouse, Jr., minus two and 33rd, Harrison Burton, Tyler Reddick, minus three and 34th, 35th is William Byron, minus five, the only car out getting a DNF today, rookie Zane Smith in 36. That leaderboard update brought to you by Hunt Brothers Pizza, where we love racing and we love pizza. Find your next pizza at HuntBrothersPizza.com or download the Hunt Brothers Pizza app. And it looks like the build is queuing up for another restart here following our eighth yellow flag of the day. The lights are off on the pace car. And Mark Garrett, it's about time to get back to it. It sure is. So NASCAR starter Shannon Bettnerick has that right a hand gripping the green flag, just as Doug Rice did to start the race today. She's kind of taking a cue from my Doug and using his kind of style. Shannon now waves the green flag. They get through the Geico restart zone. Hamlin leads the pack to one. Ty Gibbs, Mark Truex Jr. lined up on the outside behind Denny Hamlin while teammate Christopher Bell occupied the inside lane. Ty Gibbs Rick quickly to the race lead. Oh, it's crazy for the lead here. Ty Gibbs will take it away from Denny Hamlin. Side by side in third is Christopher Bell and Mark Truex Jr. Larson up to fifth. Larson will try to get to the inside of Mark Truex Jr. Off of turn two. He won't get it done. The Toyota's again. One, two, three, four. We've now had a record 41 lead changes here at Bristol with Ty Gibbs taking over the top spot for the eighth time today. He leads the field again into turn number one. Once again, it is the machine of Kyle Larson trying to break up that Joe Gibbs juggernaut up front, but he won't get it done on turn three. Ty Gibbs on the point. His teammates strung out behind him. That's Denny Hamlin, Christopher Bell, and Truex. And it's Kyle Larson, as you said, Rob, trying to get into the mix. And right behind them, John Hunter Nemechek and Todd Gilliland, both of them had strong days. They race door to door. Gibbleton on the top side of the racetrack. Here's Nemechek easing to his inside. He goes after Martin Truex Jr. They nearly bang doors. They're back in one. Martin Truex Jr. has lost the fourth position to Kyle Larson, about to lose another one to Nemechek, potentially, as they're side by side in three. I Gibbs is Denny Hamlin, Christopher Bell, Larson hanging on to fourth, but Truex is not going to let him drive away. He's rallying back to the outside. And Kyle Larson will work that bottom lane. He'd like to drift up off of turn three, but Truex being there will hit the tip from doing so. 
if you just joined us, we still have 172 laps to go in the Food City 500 that's been entertaining from start to this point. Again, leaders back in one. And once again, here comes Keslowski working the top side of the racetrack. He's coming from just outside the top ten on the restart. The work his way around Blaney and Medell. The lights have been on here for about a half hour. You can see them reflecting off the shiny surfaces of these cars. Todd Gilliland now trying to work around John Hunter Nemechek and pick up a spot in the top ten. Looks like he'll do that off of turn two. Now moving to the outside of Nemechek is Keslowski. As they come out of the corner, single file up front, Gilliland trying to get around the outside of Martin Trek Jr. Behind him, Nemechek Kislowski door to door. And behind them is the machine of Michael McDowell, Ryan Blaney. Now coming to the outside is Justin Haley. He works around the Wallace. Ty Gibbs comfortable in the lead. Battles are back around sixth place right now. It's Todd Gilliland. Truex has dropped back a little bit here, Rob. Yes, he has. Looks like he will lose a position to Todd Gilliland as Gilliland works by him on the outside of the racetrack. Truex had been trying to get around Kyle Larson on the outside. I wonder if he felt like he had hurt his tires and needed to drop back down and cool things for a while. Gilliland now makes his way around Truex, move him up to fifth. And he immediately goes to the bottom of the racetrack in the process. Everybody single file all the way back to Justin Haley and Michael McDowell as they race side by side. Got to give a shout here to Cass. Rolla don't want to put the whammy on him, but Mark, he's having a nice run today. He's been very solid, and for the moment, he's in the 13th spot. He's crept into the top 10, certainly riding now in the top 15, so this has been a great day for Kaz Rolla. Meanwhile, out front, Denny Hamlin trying to tighten the noose on his teammate, Ty Gibb. As the front three begin to pull away from the fourth place, car of Kyle Larson, third is Christopher Bell. Two uh, car lengths from Gibbs, back to Hamlin, and number five, back to Bell. Watching Brad Keselowski once again. He is riding in the back end of the top ten. He is eighth right now, and he has been riding the top line all day long, trying to get around Truex, who's sliding through the pack. Despite having contact on pit road with Austin Sindri, that poor Keselowski continues to be strong. He'll clear Truex in three. As they work their way out of turn four, 164 laps to go. If you just joined us, Ty Gibbs won the opening two stages. He's led the race eight times for 82 laps in county with his teammates Danny Hamlin, Martin Truex, and Christopher Bell also leading the second, third, and fourth amount of laps in this Food City 500. We don't know how hard these teams are pedaling, Mark, but as this race goes on and on and on, we're creeping up on the 400 lap mark here in a little bit. Ty Gibbs seems to be like he's established himself as the car to be. He's led 83 laps, and that car looks really comfortable out there. He does, and again, a week ago at Phoenix, the JGR Toyota has overpowered everybody, and Rob, right now, he does look smooth out front. He does, and it still flashes back to yesterday when the very first lap of practice for Ty Gibbs, he ended up in the outside wall. It was suspected that he might have to go back up car. They were able to make repairs. Whatever they did to this machine, it is good indeed as he's enjoying the race leader, Carly, over teammate Hamlin. Duck, let's not forget, he led 102 laps on the way to finishing fifth uh, last fall in the night race here at Bristol. And uh, it looks like he's picking up where he left off there. Very comfortable. By the way, don't want to ride off Josh Berry. We know he had a spin a little bit earlier. But Mark, he didn't lose that much track position. And he's comfortably out there at about the 13th or 14th spot. And we can't emphasize this enough. There's still a lot to go. 160 circuits here. A little bit of a traffic jam there. Bubba Wallace, Todd Gilliland now starting to slide backwards. Right there is Nemechek along with Barry. I believe also in that group of William Byron, but Byron minus two laps. Pass Rollo bypassed both of them on the outside of the racetrack. Not the inside of John Hunter Nemechek. It's the many laps down car of William Byron. He has had a struggle this afternoon. This is a 21 lap green flag run, and there is a gaggle of cars. It's Alex Bowman and Josh Berry all knotted up there together. And Mark, they're trying to get a little bit of separation as Barry goes to the high side of the track. Barry gives up a spot to Alex Bowman, trying to close in as well. Eric Jones just behind them. Briscoe now dives under Gilliland. Chase Briscoe's been to the front and back. Now he's trying to work his way through the pack as Gilliland continues to slide backward. Not clearing him as Briscoe's in into turn three. And while we watch this going on in the back of the pack, up front for the first time today, real separation. Ty Gibbs, two car lengths over Denny Hammond, eight back to Christopher Bell, and then it's probably about 10 back to Larson. 
That's the first time we've seen kind of a breakaway today. And Doug, we're seeing the lap times a little bit quicker. They're sub 17 seconds, 16.8. So maybe as nighttime begins to settle in at Bristol Motor Speedway, the speeds will go up even as they try to protect those right side tires. We've got 154 laps to go in the Food City 500. Hi, I'm PRN's Alexis Harris. Want to listen to PRN anywhere you go? By downloading the PRN mobile app, you can listen to live race broadcasts and have on-demand access to your favorite shows like Fast Talk, Hit Reporters, Garage Pass, and PRN's Pass the Track. Download today to make sure you don't miss any of the action. Get the latest racing information at your fingertips with the PRN mobile app, available on Apple App Store and Google Play. Find more information at GoPRN.com. Guitars and fast cars at Nashville Super Speedway, June 30th in the NASCAR Cup Series Ally 400. Here at Bristol Motor Speedway, Ty Gibbs leads, but Denny Hamlin's chopped it down to about a two-car length advantage. It's 10 back to Christopher Bell in third, the rest of the top 10. Kyle Larson, Brad Keselowski, then it's Martin Truex Jr., Justin Haley, Michael McDowell, Brian Blaney, and Bubba Wallace rounding out the top 10. With 150 laps to go at Bristol, this is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. A NASCAR moment with Doug Rice and Kyle Petty. They established the Hall of Fame. First two people that get in, besides your dad, is Bill Frank Sr. and yep. Bill Jr. Now, I, I'm thinking that your time behind the wheel <laughs> overlapped with Bill Jr. Today. Yes, for sure. For sure. I was called to the truck many times uh, while Bill Jr. was in there. What I remember about Bill Jr. as much as anything was him sitting and talking to my granddad. You sat down at the racetrack and, and they would talk about where the sport was and where the sport was going. You know, I'll never forget, we were doing some stuff. I was called to the truck and I was reminded gently about Bill France Jr. that this was his sport. And if I would like to participate in his sport, that I needed to kind of change my ways. And I changed my ways so that I could participate in the sport. But I think the vision that Bill Sr. had for where the sport could be, Bill Jr. looked at it and said, we're there. Now let's take it someplace different. Bill Jr. had that passion to the day he passed. He had that passion for this sport. Ty Gibbs and Denny Hamlin lead by about 15 car licks and about 10 or 12 laps or so they'll start catching the back end of the back markers. Let's go in and check out with Brett McMillan. Martin Truex Jr. has dropped back just a little bit, still in the top 10, but he came on the radio a few laps ago and told his crew chief, James Small, he's a little bit concerned. He said he had to push harder than he wanted to in the early part of this run because he wanted to get down on the inside. So I think he backed off just a little bit, hoping he could save his tires. Now, Small told him he was okay during that last run. His set of tires were one of the ones that looked pretty good on my end of good road. The ones that did not look so good, Chase Elliott, at one point in this race, Doug, we had drivers running 17.8 seconds. Out front right now, Ty Gibbs, Denny Hamlin, 16.8. They have picked up the pace. They must feel better about those tires as the temperature drops. I, I think that has to have something to do with it. And, Mark, this has been a little bit of a green flag run, 39 laps. We're not seeing quite as much of that rubber dust accumulate up in the corners as we were a little bit earlier. So I think the changing conditions have have manifested themselves, and we've got Daniel Hemrick who got up into the fence. We'll see if that brings out the yellow right now. NASCAR painfully aware of it. He has got a tire going down on that car. I don't know if he's going to be able to nurse it back around to pit road or not as we watch the driver of the 31 from Colleg Racing. How long can Hemrick nurse this car before he has to bring it on pit lane? Dougie nearly spun it out in turn two that last time by, but he stays on the gas the best he can. And uh, Hemrick riding in turn two, but has to practically stop the car in the corners to keep it down on the bottom. I am really shocked that Hemrick has not brought that car to pit road as swinging to his outside right now are Brad Keselowski and Martin Truex Jr. and Ryan Blaney is coming up on him. Meanwhile, watching the leaders out there, and it's going—it's a pretty tight battle here 
with Ty Gibbs and Denny Hamlin, and they are catching some lap cars. They're going to put Harrison Burton another lap down as he goes a lap down. That's three down, and next in line, it'll be Austin Cindric, the last car on the lead lap. Cindric is currently running in the 29th position. Just up ahead of him is Ricky Stenhouse, Jr., as uh, he fades back. Meanwhile, Ryan Blaney trying to drive around Kislowski. That's a battle for the sixth spot. And in front of him, Denny Hamlin has taken the race lead away from Ty Gibbs. They've caught up with the back bumper of Austin Cindric, who's trying to remain on the lead lap. So that's a big play there for Hamlin as he gets around his teammate. They still haven't been able to get to Austin Cindric. In front of Cindric on the racetrack is Stenhouse. Stenhouse is already minus two laps. So everybody playing it cautious, Mark. You can tell that they're all thinking, how much do I want to abuse these tires? How bad do I need to go up and get this spot? Denny Hamlin doesn't want any part of trying to get around Austin Cindric. Now it looks like Robbie's easing to the outside to try to put him a lap down. Yeah, you, you, you're going to be patient, but you've got to go, and he goes to the outside of Cindric. Cindric battling to stay on the lead lap. We'll see if Austin Cindric can hold off the charge. Not for long. Denny Hamlin swings to the outside, side by side, trying to put Cindric a lap down. Right in front of them is the car of Todd Gilliland, along with eight or uh, machine, the, the 47 machine, and he gets bumped by Austin Cindric. And uh, we got a caution flag out on the racetrack as the leaders got a little aggressive trying to get the Cindric spun, line. as did Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Minimal contact. But that will be the ninth yellow flag of the day. And that was faster cars catching up with slower cars. Todd Gilliland was fading back through the pack. Cindric made it three wide. Gilliland on the, uh, in the middle. Cindric shot the inside. Then he shot up the racetrack into Ricky Stenhouse Jr., who had just gone around the outside of Todd Gilliland. So Stenhouse spins. Cindric spins right in front of leader Denny Hamlin. Hamlin, however, able to safely get by. 46 Hamlin. Hamlin, however, able to safely get by. 46 laps under the green ties the longest green flag run we have had previously today in the Food City 500. We work hard to keep our cars looking great on the outside, but engine components need our attention too. That's where you can trust C-Max Micro Lubricant to disperse carbon buildup in your engine fuel system to keep your car or truck running at its peak. By soaking into the metal of your engine, Z-Max Micro Lubricant improves performance, extends engine life, and reduces emissions. Trust the many customers who've said, thanks for saving my engine. Find out more at ZMAX.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm what you might call very good at hide and seek. And since we got Xfinity, we have Wi-Fi all over the house, even in my super secret hiding spots. So I can kill time in here by streaming my favorite Ha! Found ya. How? You left to find my tablet on. Get wall-to-wall -wall Wi Fi on the Xfinity 10G network. Restrictions apply, not available in all areas. Actual speeds vary. With a record 42 lead changes here at Bristol, again working the ninth yellow flag in the Food City 500, you're listening to PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third-generation race car driver. And we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, there was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Here's Christopher Bell. My Toyota Camry TRD race car isn't cheap to build and prepare. I have a pit crew that maintains and fixes my equipment. I have a spotter high above the track watching my back, talking me through turns and potential dangers on the track. I physically train to handle the stress of driving. And I have software helping my crew chief and engineers make the right strategy calls. And with all this, I never take my eyes off the road, and neither should you. One distraction can change everything in one instant. That last caution here at Bristol could have been a game changer. It uh, had Austin Cindric and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. involved. Kind of a lazy spin there, if you can call the speeds that are going when you spin lazy. But Mark, uh, getting through it was Denny Hamlin 
and Ty Gibbs. They were both very close. That could have easily collected both the leaders. Absolutely. Green light flashing on pit road. Uh, we still have 128 laps to go. Do we have takers on pit lane? You bet we do. Denny Hamlin slows down to 30 miles per hour, leads him onto the pit lane to Wendy Venturini. Ty Gibbs giving him a little nudge down that back stretch. Ty Gibbs pitted on this back area. He started a little bit free. He's been asked to tighten it up just a little bit. Christopher Bell also on pit road asked to make him a little bit freer from the corner to the early acceleration. It's going to be four tires on both Ty Gibbs and Christopher Bell. He's already down and away. Also on the road, Kyle Larson for four tires. The balance has been good, Brad Gilly. Here's your race leader, Denny Hamlin, in his pit box. He told Chris Gaypart he's trying to wear the right front and the right rear equally. It's working for him. Very happy with his race car. Four tires, Sunoco, no changes. Brett McMillan. And Ryan Blaney comes in. Good run that time. Got him into the top ten. He's getting a four-tire change this time. Absolutely no adjustments. They're right on the left side of the car. The tire is on. The car is full of Sunoco fuel. 11.1 seconds. Hamlin again. First in, first off. Christopher Bell up one spot to second, followed by Ty Gibbs. Then it's going to be Kyle Larson, Martin Truex Jr., Brad Keselowski. And then it looks like it's going to be Ryan Blaney. And then Justin Haley, Bubba Wallace. Ninth yellow flag of the day. We have had 43 lead changes and 14 different leaders. We have ran a lot of laps under the yellow because NASCAR has been extending these yellows. There were already 92 laps on the yellow, but 127 left to go. So, Mark, I, somewhere I think around like maybe 75 to go. When do you think you push the button and say, forget about tire wear, we got to go? I think under 50. I, I don't yeah. think we've seen a run today where these tires could take the punishment of a hard 50-lap green flag run. Let's check in with our Raleigh Auto Parts pit reporters. We'll start off with Brett McMillan. Look at the tires that just came off of Ryan Blaney's car. Looking a lot better than they did last time. He still has a little bit of coring on the inside of the right front. Brett Gilly? I mentioned Denny Hamlin says he's trying to manage the right side by working on the right front, working on the right rear, and trying to do that. Says he's very happy with his car, frees up a little bit toward the end of the run, but that actually seems to be working with the speed of his car. Chris Gaypart said, look, Denny, I think if we just manage it from here on out, I think this one's ours. Wendy Venturini. You see a lot of cords up and down pit road, but it's interesting to watch which drivers are managing it the best. Right now, I'm not looking at any cords on the five car, the right side tires for Kyle Larson. I did see cords showing on Joey Logano's right front. When I came down pit road, the pit stop before this, I would say about 85% of the cars had cords showing. This time down pit road, Right now, standing in Denny Hamlet's pit, two sets of sticker tires left. If you split that in half, that should be enough. I'm hearing on a lot of the radios, including Denny Hamlet's, I would expect the field to start going a lot harder right now. Based on where we are, lap count wise. Versus segments today. I always chart out how many I think we're going to have before we start the race. I, I had 10 slots. I may have to add a few slots. You just might have to do that. And again, I think this race, Doug, the lap times are picking up. I think the racing up front will pick up. If they can just get to about 50 laps, then they are going to turn it loose. Let's give you a full field rundown.
with 123 laps to go. Denny Hamlin is your leader. Ninth time today he's been out front. Christopher Bell second. Ty Gibbs third. Fourth, Martin Truex Jr. Fifth, Brad Keselowski. Ryan Blaney sixth. Seventh, Justin Haley. Kyle Larson eighth. Ninth, Bubba Wallace. Tenth, Michael McDowell. Kyle Larson is going to drop through the field. He got a penalty for equipment interference. So we had him at eighth, but he'll be falling through the field. Right now at 11th, it's John Hunter Nemechek. Eric Jones is 12th. 13th, Josh Berry. Kaz Grala 14th. 15th, Chase Briscoe. Ross Chastain is 16th. 17th, Alex Bowman. Chris Buescher 18th. 19th will be Ryan Priest. Carson Hosevar rides 20. Corey LaJoy is 21st. 22nd, Austin Dillon. 23rd, A.J. Allmendinger. Chase Elliott, 24th. 25th, Joey Logano. Kyle Busch, 26th. 27th, Daniel Suarez. Last car on the lead lap in 28th is Todd Gilliland. Minus one in 29th, Austin Sendrick. Minus one in 30th, Daniel Hemrick. Two laps down is Noah Gregson, followed by Tyler Reddick, Harrison Burton, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., William Byron. The only car out belongs to that of Zane Smith. And we are ready to resume racing here at Bristol Motor Speedway in the Food City 500. The front row, a pair of Toyotas. It's Denny Hamlin on the outside to his inside, Ty Gibbs. And it's Hamlin that gets a nice jump. He'll pull the train to one. And top four Joe Gibbs racing cars. It was Gibbs on the inside. The other three lined up on the outside. And then he lurks from turn two, running one through four. Christopher Bell jumps out of that third spot, tries to take the lead. He rolls around Denny Hamlin. Bell out front for the third time in this event. Look who's just trying to make his way into the top five. Justin Haley in that Rick Ware racing four goes to the outside of Brad Kozlowski as they battle over the door. Now going to the outside of second place, Christopher Bell is going to be Ty Gibbs. They'll battle side by side right in their tire tracks. It's Martin Truex Jr. Hamlin will lead off turn two by three car lengths side by side for second. Teammates Hamlin and Bell. Hamlin will throw uh, Bell will get up the spot to Gibbs. 15.8 seconds that lap on fresh tires. They've turned up the wick in the Food City 500. Hamlin, the leader, back in one. Well, let's see if they can maintain that pace. The front five now single file, side by side for six. Up top is Haley on the bottom is Ryan Blaney. Joe Gibbs, Toyotas once again lead the way. The front four all from that shop. It's Hamlin, Gibbs, Bell, Truex. Then it's Brad Keselowski in fifth. Still side by side is sixth and seventh. That is Blaney and Haley. Justin Haley, eighth and ninth are side by side. That's Bubba Wallace and Michael McDowell. Right in front of them, Blaney again trying to hold off Justin Haley. Haley has the advantage on the outside. Things quiet among the top five, single file, each separated by about a car length and a half. As I say that, Haley moves to the outside of Blaney and wants them. Justin Haley trying to make a run to break into the top five. He's on the outside of Ryan Blaney. Can he pull alongside Brad Keselowski? He's out there right now, Rob. Blaney has given up the spot. Let's see if Keselowski can hang on to that fifth spot as Haley fights hard to get around Blaney. <laughs> He now gets in front of Blaney. Blaney almost taps him just a bit in turn number four. Now, Haley has sets his sights on Brad Keselowski as Michael McDowell now goes after Blaney. McDowell working the middle group of the racetrack, trying to squeeze Ryan Blaney to the bottom, and he'll do so off turn two and pick up a spot. Blaney gets a little bit sideways off the corner. Blaney, the pole sitter for this race, but never really has been a factor of running up front. Right now, Denny Hamlin continues to lead. It's his 84th lap on the point. Caution the win for Michael McDowell. He'll make that outside lane work as he picks up another spot this fashion with Justin Haley. So again, Hamlin up front. Ty Gibbs now putting on a little bit more pressure. He has to. Bell is breathing down his neck in turn one. So the front four continue. Nose to tail off turn number two. Brad Keselowski's four hanging on by three car lengths behind the fourth place car of Truex. Keselowski, the outlier as far as the top five are concerned. Four Toyotas, then the Ford of Keselowski, the Ford of Michael McDowell in line, and then you got Justin Haley riding there in the seventh spot. Back a few more spots. John Hunter Nemechek rolls toward the front once again. He'll go to the outside of Emma Wallace, and now go to work on Blaney in turn four. Again, top three continue to tighten. Hamlin has the lead. Gibbs creeping towards his back bumper as Bell looms large in his rearview mirror. True X for the moment, content to sit back just a little bit and watch the teammates in front of him. He's five car lengths back of Christopher Bell. Uh, Truex all along kind of got him a little cradle there in the four spot. Then it's 10 car lengths back to Keselowski, 10 more back to Michael McDowell as they've kind of settled down. Tell you what, though, Mark Garrett, Ty Gibbs has not let Denny Hamlin drive away here at all. Absolutely not. Still running laps under 17 seconds, 16.6 the last time by. We have now had a record 46 lead changes, Doug. 
Among those, 27 belong to the four Joe Gibbs Toyota drivers. Joe, Joe, Joe Gibbs Toyota is putting on a clinic here today. As we said earlier, it's it's not happenstance when all four of your cars are running like this. They brought great race cars to this racetrack, and so put their drivers, Rob Albright, are hitting the mark. You know, they were just as strong at Phoenix a week ago, completely different conditions and a different racetrack, so their short track package is definitely on the improvement. Brad Keselowski dug in that fifth spot. He's been hanging out there in the top ten all day. This is a man who won here in 2020 on the concrete. A little bit of trouble on the front stretch. Blaney gets hit and is way off the pace. Able now as they go three wide through turn number two. Cars going inside and outside Ryan Blaney. Finally getting that car up to speed. But Brad Keselowski, Doug, he's hanging in there. He's going to be dangerous at the end of this race. You know he's going to be going for it in a losing streak of 102 races. Phil Mike Keselowski has been a permanent fixture at fifth today. He has ridden in that spot for the majority of this race, not going up trying to put himself in any kind of danger, create any sort of problem for himself out there now as we're almost inside of 100 laps to go. Doug, he finished fourth at Phoenix after opening up the year with two DNFs at Daytona and Atlanta, so he kind of righted the ship a bit last week at Phoenix. Again, would love to go to Victory Lane again here at Bristol this afternoon. We've got 102 laps to go in the Food City 500. Denny Hamlin out front, leading teammate Ty Gibbs. The NASCAR season is here, and Toyota Racing is looking for clashers. Did you clash at the Coliseum with your favorite Toyota drivers? Clashing with the HOA, who won't let you carve bell number 20 into your lawn. Or maybe your Tyler Reddick shirt clashed with your pants while meeting the in-laws. If you're a clasher, then we want you. Be part of the action at toyota.com slash racing. Toyota, let's go places. NASCAR is a registered trademark of the National Association of South Carolina Auto Racing. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Oh, tires looking like new with superior coverall tire shine at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Our professional parts people can help you choose the right detailing supplies for your vehicle. And right now, get two bottles of superior coverall tire shine for just $18. See store for details. Stop by your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Ty Gibbs now the new leader out of the Joe Gibbs stable, and Christopher Bell rides second, Denny Hamlin is third, and Truex is back to fourth. Five car lengths off of Truex is going to be Brad Keselowski in the fifth spot. We're under the century mark of laps to go, 98 to go here in the Food City 500. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Kathy Martindell and Paul Shad on Racing Country. Hi, I'm Christopher Bell, and this is the fastest two hours on the radio, Racing Country. <laughs> I still have a lot to prove to compete at the level that I want to compete at. We have more to accomplish in the sport, and we want to do better than what we've done the last two years. Racing Country. Grassroots is where the hometown heroes of Friday and Saturday nights are and where the future stars of NASCAR are made. First career win for James Friesen in the Test Racing Sportsman Series. PRN's At the Track is a people show about the people of grassroots racing. The stories and journeys from the grassroots are always unique. PRN's At the Track covers the people of America's baddest bull ring. Hear PRN's At the Track each week on broadcast radio stations, the free PRN app, or at goprn.com. Three laps remain here in the Food City 500, so four-fifths of this race in the bank. We know this. These teams have figured out how to manage the tires and that the Joe Gibbs Toyotas are pretty quick. Let's check in with Brenton Miller. Well, Ryan Blaney is dropping the top 10, almost out of the top 25, running 24th right now. He was told to manage his tires during this run to make sure he can get to the final run where he can be a little more aggressive, but he's had a handful of a car during this run. Looks like he's been pretty loose, but he hasn't been saying anything on the radio. 
some lap traffic up ahead of leader Ty Gibbs, who's starting to get a little bit of pressure from his teammate Christopher Bell. And Doug, Ty Gibbs at age 21 trying to win his first race. His teammates, well, Hamlin has 51 wins. Bell, 7. Truex, 34. They've had their place at the table in victory lane. Ty Gibbs yet to taste it. And right now, i got to believe he's at least smelling maybe a trip to victory lane. He, he wants that sword. He, want, he wants the big trophy that you get here. You get the sword for the night race here. So he, he wants to – they have a they have a, they have a real life-size trophy at this place. Uh, uh, yes, they do. Yes, I love they it. Do. It's, not, it's not something that you can hide. And right now, Rob Albright, he's got to navigate a little bit of lap traffic. He moves around Noah Briggs, and next up will be the machine to Ricky Stenhouse, Jr. I think victory almost came too easily for Ty Gibbs in the Xfinity Series. He's had to work a lot harder in the Cup Series, but he has shown that he's capable of running up front, and he's certainly proving it today on the lap bumper of Stenhouse. Of course, Gibbs, the 2022 Xfinity Series champion, and Ricky Stenhouse, Jr., his roadblock right now, but Stenhouse, it looks like, will move up the track, give Gibbs a spot on the bottom. Front two have eased away just a bit from third running Hamlin. That, of course, is the leader, Ty Gibbs, and his teammate, Christopher Bell, who won just a week ago. Let's see if anybody has kind of been languishing in the background and wants to try to make a run late in this race at the race leaders. For right now, it's Ty Gibbs. And Mark, he feel, I feel like, and this could all be subject to change, but he's the one guy that can almost will his way to the front. Could be. And again, he and Bell starting to ease their way away from third place Denny Hamlin, who's easing away from Truex, who's easing away from Brad Keselowski. And again, right now, Doug, I think they're trying to get to that point where maybe we get one more caution flag, change tires, and then they're going to go all out for this race. Although, again, the race pace, Doug, still under 17 seconds. Ty Gibbs is not backing off a whole lot. According to Marquero, ease on, ease on down the road here for all of those teams as it is Ty Gibbs on the lead by about a car length over Denny, over uh, Christopher Bell. Denny Hamlin is six car lengths back here. So here's the way this is shaping up, and we've said it at nauseum, it feels like. Four to Toyotas from Joe Gibbs Racing have proven to be the cars to be. The fifth place car, he's almost been a fixture there, is going to be Brad Keselowski. Uh, Tip of the hat to Justin Haley riding six. John Hunter Nemechek is also having a really nice day. He is seventh. Josh Berry has rallied from spinning out on the racetrack to get back into the top ten. Not trying to forecast the winner here. All we can do is tell you what's happened to this point. 295 laps in this race have been led, and we're at now 420, have been led by the Joe Gibbs Toyotas. Again, strong performance a week ago at Phoenix, and they're backing it up today in the Food City 500. So the performance in this race has been dictated by tire manage. But, Mark, I feel like as we've moved through this race, that's become less and less of a story as the teams figured out what was going on. I think they've gotten more conservative, Doug, perhaps on their setups on the get-go, on a restart. And we still don't, though, Doug, see a lot of marbles and, and black dust and sand-like rubber up against the walls. And so if we get another yellow flag, NASCAR will surely want to clean that up before we get to the finish. All right, we'll start looking at this now because the longest green flag run of the day was 46. We currently, when the leaders come back to the line here, it will be 45 laps under the green. Yep, and they again are starting to equal that longest run. There goes 45. And next time by for Ty Gibbs, it's going to be 46. And there it is, Gibbs across the line. So 46 laps, that equals the longest green flag run of the day. And we're going to quickly bypass that. And we'll see how, how does the tire management story play out here. Does it come back? Has that sort of mitigated itself as we watch Todd Gilliland's having a struggle to get around out here right now? But the race leaders all seem to be in a pretty good groove at this juncture of the race. Denny Hamlin now has moved around Christopher Bell. Now he's going after the lead. Ty Gibbs hits the back bumper of Todd Gilliland, gets him out of shape. We remain under green, side by side. Gibbs and Hamlin for the top spot in turn number one. They could easily have taken out four Gibbs cars, and now Ty Gibbs continues to languish behind Gilliland, who's just a rolling roadblock. Yeah, Ty Gibbs got caught up behind uh, Gilliland, and that allowed Truex to move up to the second spot as they come up and lap Joey Logano here. So suddenly things change dramatically. It was the two youngsters for JGR. Now it's the veterans that are occupying the top two spots in turn three.
Hamlin out front for the 11th time today. Again, a record breaking 48 lead changes. The old record 40 coming into the sap this afternoon. And now Christopher Bell and Joey Logano nearly make contact. Brad Keselowski nearly gets into Logano as well. That's enabled Brad Keselowski to narrow the margin between himself and Christopher Bell. But in the meantime, Hamlin and Truex have disappeared. A full straightaway now ahead of fourth place Bell. I don't think it's my imagination. Starting to see these cars skate around on the racetrack. Ryan Blaney goes way up the track. He is off the pace here, but we'll keep our eye on the leaders here. Ty Gibbs, Doug, is way off the pace. He has fallen back from the leaders. Gibbs is third, but it's better than three seconds. Just a moment ago, he was in the lead. He got trapped in traffic, and Rob Albright, that car has fallen off big time. You kind of wonder if they weren't trying to pace themselves to a place where they could get to one more pit stop, but I don't think that's going to be the case. Gibbs and Bell continue to backpedal and really struggle. Hamlin saved his tires for a while. He's now in a hornet's nest of lap traffic. Let's go over to Wendy Venturini. We hit the 45 lap mark, and it was like immediately everyone backed off their pace because they felt their tires going away. On the radio communication, drivers are getting lists of car numbers and are falling off trying to just hang on. The 12, the 22, the 38, all of them being listed off. And right now in the 20 pit stall of Christopher Bell, his pace dropped tremendously. Now 6, 7, 8 seconds back when he was just leading in first and second moments ago. Kyle Larson has fallen off the pace. He was 19th. Hamlin has gone around him, put him down the lap, also put Kaz Grola down a lap. Hamlin now around Suarez, about to put another lap on the multiple laps down Tyler Reddick. Also, it looks like he's going around Kyle Busch. He is down a lap again. So is Chase Briscoe. The tires are just falling up, up the map for some of these guys. Longest green flag run of the day by a good bit here. Chase Briscoe's car, he is 15 miles an hour off the pace as we're watching him flash by us here along the front stretch. Diddy Hamlin managing this race well. He is getting ready to come up and put Bubba Wallace a lap down here as he slides underneath him. That's Bubba's, la Bubba's first time he's been a lap down. Ryan Blaney is way off the pace, Marcus. We watch him creep around the racetrack. Diddy Hamlin has company, though. Truex is staying lockstep with him as they try to work there through that traffic up ahead. Austin Dillon bangs into the back bumper of Todd Gilliland. He's trying to stay on the lead lap, but Hamlin and rolls around him on the outside, and now it looks like he's about to put Logano down a lap. You know, it almost appears as if, if you didn't know better, that Hamlin and Truex suddenly were just given from divine intervention an extra 50 horsepower, the way they're motoring around these guys and putting car after car a lap down. And look, look at William Byron, Doug. He's multiple laps down. He's blowing by both Hamlin and Truex as we go down to Brett McPhillan. And Ryan played his right front tire. He's completely down. He's come to a stop in his pit stop. Three working against the jack underneath them. They do that to get the right side tires changed. They're going to go ahead and make this a four tire stop for him. But he's losing lap points at the pit row. Denny Hamlin right now is just putting cars down methodically, and we have whittled it down to only 11 cars on the lead lap. Justin Haley right now is the last car on the lead lap, and we'll see how soon it is before Hamlin and Truex get around him as they do that right now, Rob. A few laps ago, Christopher Bell was battling for the race lead. He's now right in front of his teammate leader, Denny Hamlin. He's about to go a lap down, and right in front of him is Justin. Up in front of him, it looks like cars have just stopped as they're trying to nurse their tires. Christopher Bell now. Cars are flashing by him inside and out. He'll go to the bottom of the racetrack. He'll stick up on the banking. Now he'll come on a pit road. He simply cannot stay out any longer. Bell almost spun that car out, tried to get on the pit road. Back over to Wendy. It was about three laps ago he asked if he could come to pit road, and Adam Stevens said not unless we absolutely have to. Now he's coming in for four tires, Sunoco fuel. He hung on as long as he could, but man, they were falling off the pace. And Blaney came in, got tires, came back out. He's showing a lot of speed, but almost spun out on the new tires. It's still Denny Hamlin and Truex, only separated by a couple of car licks. But Blaney is coming back out with fresh tires, Mark. He looks fast. He's being scored four laps down, but he blows by Truex. He's going to go around Hamlin, make it minus three. And when Hamlin and Truex pit, we'll have to see, Doug, what they do now. They had a big lead, but when do you pit? You cannot give up too much to these guys that are just 
riding around the racetrack wide open now on fresh tires. We're down to only seven cars on the lead lap. Now, a lot of this will recycle back around because once these cars come in and get fresh tires, they are ready to go back at it again. But just watching Denny Hamlin trying to control this race, and Rob, we got Ty another Hampton car. Ty Hampton's stop on the banking in turn two. Literally, that car was not running 20 miles an hour. He gets it back up to enough speed to get down to the bottom of the racetrack, but he has to pit. Sonic gives down on the curbing now. He'll come into pit, but Mark, that's going to cost him at least a couple of more laps because of the slow speed that he had coming to pit road. Again, I'm fascinated to know what the crew chiefs are thinking for Mar uh, Denny Hamlin and Martin Truex Jr. They're out front. They have got a 4.1 second lead over Kislowski, 7.6 over Alex Bowman, but a lot of guys have pitted, and we got this weird thing going around now where some cars are practically stopped in the corners, some, like the leaders, are in between that, and others are just flying on fresh tires. Let's come back over to Wendy Venturini. Ty Gibbs is going to come down pit road and score tire and fuel for him. I see cords from three pits on the way coming off those tires. Joey Logano in the meantime just hits pit road as well. A few laps ago, he said, are we doing the right thing? And they reassured him as he came out to get a Wicked Fast 
wicked fun weekend of thrilling on-track action. Keep an eye on NHMS.com and stay tuned for more updates as we count down to New England's only NASCAR weekend, June 21st through the 23rd, right here at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. After a round of green flag pit stops, Denny Hamlin leads by one and a half seconds over Martin Truex Jr. Josh Berry is third, Brad Keselowski fourth and fifth is oh Kyle Larson. God. From the Food City 500 at Bristol Motor Speedway, this is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Hey, this is Doug Rice of PRN. Make Monday night your appointment listening right here on Fast Talk. I don't believe we will see the likes of a Kevin Harvick, a 60-plus race winner. I don't think we'll see that again. We're in an era now where guys will win 30, 40 races, and that'll be a huge career. These guys going out and playing in these other cars during the offseason. If I'm Rick Henry, no. We invest millions of dollars and hundreds of thousands of work hours <laughs> in you. And if you're going out Thursday night in some sprint car deal, it's going to pay $1,000. That is the absolute ultimate selfish act. That's where the prestige is. You know, there's so much tradition at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And yes, it's cool to race there in any iteration. But the tradition and the heritage is on the oval. That's Fast Talk right here on the Performance Racing Network. Speedway alongside Doug Rice. I'm Mark Carroll. Joining us up there in turns one and two today, Rob Albright, our three O'Reilly Auto Parts pit reporters, Wendy Venturini, Brad Gilly, and Brett McMillan. Right now, Doug, only nine cars are listed on the lead lap. Martin Truex Jr. with lap traffic holding up Denny Hamlin, Rob, has caught the race leader. Chase Elliott, the first one that they're going to put a lap on. They're nose to tail. Denny Hamlin next up will be Corey LaJoy. Truex on his back bumper. Chase Elliott, 11th. Now the reason why I'm pissed is because let's say that we reach 400 viewers, right, in my stream. As soon as that happens, my fucking phone wants to cut out and says, Hey, your phone's at 20%. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. Ryan, whose tire tracks is Martin Truex Jr. The next car is there. <laughs> William Byron. Up ahead of them. <laughs> Carlin, Alex Bowman, Jeff Gordon, Jeff Gordon, Jeff Gordon. Free to the checkered flag and the food. I'm gonna go kill somebody. It's brought to you by Toyota. For the latest Toyota racing information, visit Toyota Racing. I'm sad. And now it is a pair of I'm gonna go cry. Being here at Bristol Motor Speedway in the person of Denny Hamlin and Martin Truex Jr. They have played the strategy game to perfection. And but Rob, a lot of lap traffic directly in front of both of them. Absolutely, that's exactly what Brad Kozlowski needs. He's almost a half. Uh, race track behind and running in the third position. They go around William Byron for yet another time. Again, cannot emphasize just what kind of traffic the leader's trying to negotiate with Truex hot on his trail. Our Truex Jr. would be wise just to let Hamlin punch the holes. Next up will be Daniel Suarez, Austin Dillon, and Daniel Hemrick. Hem Hemrick, get ahead to the leader. Yeah, let Denny Hamlin do all the heavy lifting here. He can be your blocking back, and you can just go through the hole as Hamlin now swings to the outside of Daniel Suarez. Suarez recognizing he... To the people that left, or to the people that plan on leaving after I'm done talking, fuck you, fuck your mom, fuck your dad, fuck your whole goddamn family, fuck your sister, fuck your brother, fuck everybody, fuck your dog, fuck your cat, fuck your goddamn car, fuck, fuck your house, fuck your, fuck everything. Fuck you, and fuck you, and fuck you, and God fucking damn fuck everybody. All the 
focus on Denny Hamlin and Martin Truex Jr. trying to make their way through this lap traffic. Brad Keselowski's almost a half a lap back. And no, I don't mean it sexually. Goddamn, people. Holy hell. Race without a caution, but it very well could happen. Hamlin takes a peek to the inside of Austin Hill and nothing. Oh! Across the strike, 23 to go. Hamlin now eases to the inside of Dillon in turn one. He gets the left side tires to Hamlin right down to the yellow line, but Austin Hill will fight hard on the outside. Still, Hamlin not able to get by. This green flag run just hit the century mark. 100. And if you can't handle my language, then fuck you too. Leave. Snowflake. Spy Carla. Truex just hanging in there. He's not had no reason at this point in time to challenge his teammate Denny Hamlin for the race thing as they'll work to the outside of the I feel like Kurt Busch right now on the radio just screaming the F word. Just Up ahead, Dylan, along with Alex Bowman, last car on the lead lap in 10. And the craziness gets even more. Pretty much right in front of the leader. Still Austin Dillon hanging on. 20 laps to go. There's really no relief, as you said, Rob, for Denny Hamlin and Truex as far as lap traffic is concerned. There's easily a dozen cars right in front of them. Yeah, Hamlin. I am not a Ty Gibbs fan. Don't even fucking start. I'm a Christopher Bell fan, okay? And he's from Oklahoma. There's my reason. It's a good reason. Turn three. It looks like it's going to be settled between these two. Plus, he's cool, okay? I'm, I'm sorry. I like him. Out at this juncture, he's got to save something for the end of this race. Once again, he's in turn three. There are two cars side by side, three rows deep. And right in front of race leader Denny Hamlin, he is having a devil of a time. Come on, you old man, Truex. Come on, you're going to win this thing. Come on. With Justin Haley on the outside, Hamlin has to roll out of the throttle. Right now, Austin Dillon is no friend of Denny Hamlin. He slides up the racetrack. Here's Truex charging to the inside. He takes the lead with 17 laps to go. Let's see if Mark Truex Jr. will have any more success getting around Austin Dillon with his teammate Denny Hamlin. He now closes to the back bumper of Dillon. Denny Hamlin, a three-time winner here at Bristol Motor Speedway for Truex. It's a goose egg. And right now, they're side-by-side side going into one. Truex down low, Hamlin up high. Three wide in front of him. On the bottom is Chastain. Up top is Austin Dillon with Gilliland in the middle. Truex still hanging on to the lead, but Hamlin there. Hamlin now pushes Gilliland up to the drop of the racetrack. He drives down the middle at the line. It looks like Hamlin has a lead on the outside. He'll try to get around the lap car of Ross Chastain now. Chastain block Hamlin! Chastain block him! Block Hamlin! Oh shit! Chastain block him! Bring it back to 2022. Oh, never mind. Okay. I was hoping Chastain was gonna pull some shit on Hamlin like the, like the good old days in 2022. <laughs> Oh, you pussy. Come on, you old man. Come on. Truex Jr. has never captured a checkered flag. He wants this as badly as anybody. 
five furlings back of Hamlin. So when they come back to the stripe, just seven laps to go. Here is now Denny Hamlin working his way across the line past Josh Berry. Now only four cars, five cars on the lead lap. And suddenly a, bit, a little bit of clean air in front of the two race leaders. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is the one, only one they'll have to contend with soon. Six laps to go. Half dozen remain here at Bristol. It's Denny Hamlin. We'll call it three car lengths over Martin Truex Jr. back into one. Has either of them saved enough to make this a clear winner? It is Mar uh, Denny Hamlin. Three car lengths over Martin Truex Jr. Again, a very lonesome Brad Keselowski is third over eight seconds behind this great battle that flashes across the stripe with five laps to go. Right in front of the race leader, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. decides to make it too wide, moving to get outside of Blaney. Blaney will ride the bottom and give the race leaders plenty of room up top. Four laps to go. Truex cut it down by a car length, and he lost that going over into three a moment ago. Truex by three car lengths behind Denny Hamlin. Question number one, can Truex get to Hamlin? Question number two, what will he do if he does? The gap is still two car lengths. As get to the stripe, just three laps to go. A bit of a breather up ahead. The multi-lap car uh, down of uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Justin Haley, leaders back in one. Martin Truex Jr., if he's got anything left, he needs to show up right now. The gap is three car lengths. All righty. Here we go. This is where the final lap reaction video comes into play, guys. So uh, get ready for the no radio commentary, except it's me. Coming to the line, two laps to go here at Bristol, entering turns one and two for the second to final time. Hamlin still in the lead by about four or five car lengths. Trying to get through lap traffic here. Truex still trying to gain some momentum. Coming out of four, one lap to go here at Bristol. Going in turns one and two for the final time. Coming out of two. Coming down the back stretch, one final time. Hamlin still in the lead. Entering turns three and four for the final time. Coming out of four, Denny Hamlin is going to win at Bristol. And as he says before, he just beat your favorite driver. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm sad, but it's whatever. As a runner up again in 2024. Hear that? The soothing sounds of a bubble bath. And if you were here, you'd smell a single cedar leaf candle. But you're not here. Because your self-care happens out on the road. Riding your motorcycle protected by Progressive. So if you ride, get back on the road and enjoy 24-7 roadside assistance from Progressive, America's number one motorcycle insurer. And then take a shower, because it's fast. Like it. I beat your favorite driver. It's really quite comprehensive coverage, not available in all states. And who would that be? All of them. Go ahead, feel your engine. Admire that exhaust your vehicle's moving along this freeway like it was made from fresh installs and i'm not gonna lie though this is probably one of my favorite paint schemes he's run in the next gen car i like this i'm serious i like this car i like the blue and red i like it keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply any anything that isn't Larson's paint scheme, I like. This right here is cool. I like this paint scheme. I like it. Denny Hamlin comes away with his fourth win here in Thunder Valley. Now Denny Hamlin's gonna burn it down here, burst it. Look at him do them donuts. A smoke show here on the front straightaway, and that post race burnout brought to you by Sunoco from fueling your favorite NASCAR teams to filling up at the pump. All right, well. Uh, I'm probably going to get off here. Thank you guys so much. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I guess uh, stay tuned, and uh, maybe I'll do something random this week since it's spring break for me. Uh, if not, I'll, I'll see you guys next weekend. So, anyways, thank you all for tuning in. Keep up the support. Love you guys. Stay safe. Have a good night or morning, wherever you're at. And, uh, yeah, see you guys. Stay safe. Bye-bye.